afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Just checking that the um, transcription is working. Great, thank you. Yes, I think we should start now, so I hand it over to Lynn to. Thank you, Chengatai. And we check that the online participation is all set and seeing heads and nodding yes, so it is all set. Then we will um, resume the queue that we left just before lunch. I'd like to go through those um, sort of six or seven speakers. And um, if there's anybody else who's sort of dying to take the floor at this particular point, if you could signal that um, quite quickly. And then I would like to close that queue and see if we can kind of draw a line under at least some things I think we're starting to agree so that we can start to put a little bit of shape to some of our future discussions and obviously to the, to the program overall. So Wisdom, you have the floor, thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, and um, looking at the discussions uh, before we went uh, on the break, uh, I have some few uh, submissions I want to make. Now, I'm looking at um, uh, Internet Beyond uh, this the forum IGF. Um, a lot work has been done, much work has been done uh, in regards to uh, the internet governance, taking into consideration capacity building, uh, cyber security, and then all that comes with that. But then we also have to take into consideration. Uh, uh, job creation. Uh, we have to uh, look into this year's IGF carefully and then um, maybe let me say align our activities to uh, job creation. Uh, uh, solving some of these uh, cyber security uh, issues that we have globally, uh, taking into consideration uh, Africa. Uh, it, it looks as if we are uh, sliding a little bit away from uh, the core functions of uh, government. You know, they, are, they have their policies that they, are, they also follow. And then one such policy is uh, creating jobs. So going into this year's IGF, uh, I will be very grateful if uh, members can uh, look into the direction of uh, creating jobs. Uh, let me cite an example. Um, example in Kenya, um, they are using the internet a lot in creating jobs and all that. And uh, the M-Pesa is one such example. Uh, they create jobs for the youth. The youth uh, get a meaningful uh, work doing and then um, uh, cyber crime and uh, all that goes down because they have something uh, they are doing so they forget about uh, attacking someone to uh, to steal or something online um, also uh, we uh, civil societies uh, should also um, uh, try to look into some of the activities of uh, government, uh, what government is doing, and then try to align uh, what they do with government activities. You know, we can't do away with government. And, you know, government in our various uh, countries will always uh, come out with policies one way or the other. So civil society will have to see government as uh, partners and then work closely instead of maybe creating gaps between the two. Uh, that is one um, submission. And then um,
Yeah, so I, I think this is uh, what I have, uh, most especially uh, aligning this year's activities towards uh, job creating. And we, we should also have to uh, begin to show uh, impact. I think with that much work with the capacity building and all that, we have to begin to show some of this resource that is going on in our various countries in order to show the results that uh, IGF is is doing thank you chair thank you wisdom certainly a very important important topic and one that's getting a lot of play across the world anya yes thank you very much uh, i was asked to read a comment by the 2013 host country uh, representative mr otoyo government of indonesia uh, to develop more engagement from the government, first, of course, we must have a high call invitation to them. For example, we should regularly invite the minister, although we cannot be sure he or she will attend or not. But at least it will be an, uh, an awareness developed inside the office, and hopefully they will be able to manage delegation to go to the IGF meeting. Again, of course, the proposition above may work if we can deliver the invitation with proper and sufficient time. Secondly, since the end of the year is always a busy year for the government for financial and administrative affairs, and full of next year's planning meeting, then if IGF meetings held on November and December, it will be a challenge for the government to decide whether to send delegation or not. The third one, well, please consider for still having the panelist instead of active participant when we want to invite government. Because in some certain level, the formal letter with proper and clear rules written on the letter will be the key point as a reference to decide to go or not. Thank you. Thank you, and, and thank you, Donnie. That's actually very, very useful, very interesting. The next on the list we have Concertina. Oh. Okay, thanks, Chair. Um, I have just um, a few remarks. And uh, one is about co communication. I, I think it's um, very important to improve communication about uh, Internet Governance Forum and also about the Internet Governance uh, uh, definition because there are so many people, stakeholders, that um, actually are not aware about uh, Internet Governance definition. So, and this fact uh, prevent them to be part of the, the community, of the IGF community. So, I, I don't know what it is the, the solution. So, that may be um, a sort of uh, short educational program, uh, a sort of movies that explain better to people so they can um, participate more actively uh, inside the IGF community. So, and the second point I want to point, point is about NRIs. I think it is important to have um, a more close relationship between NRI because um, often it's not so easy to get uh, information uh, to buy, uh, about uh, the outcomes of uh, all um, the, these um, initiatives. So maybe uh, a platform, a common platform could be, uh, could be used to share um, outcomes that coming from the, from the initiative so that uh, the, the NRIs can uh, uh, interact in a more uh, direct way. And then the third point I want to, to raise is about uh, um, artificial intelligence. I think it's a very important, uh, this is a topic very important uh, also in uh, our country, in, in Italy, because we have um, a permanent um, uh, task force on artificial intelligence and uh, maybe it could be useful to run a best practice uh, uh, forum on this topic, okay. Thank you, thank you, Concertina. Um, I'm going to, I mean, announced a few moments ago that if anybody wanted to get into the queue for this particular set of discussions, they should do so. So I'm gonna call the queue closed after Renata and then see if we can draw maybe a couple of conclusions from the discussion here and try and advance the discussions a little more specifically going forward. So we'll stop this series of discussions after, um, after Renata. Uh, but right now, Zina, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, when thinking about uh, uh, engaging more stakeholders, 
I would, I would uh, prefer to think about uh, how to di uh, diversify within the same stakeholder. I mean, uh, when it's uh, a, government represent, uh, a government representative, it's always from the ICT sector, while everything in our lives now is being digitized more and more every day. Now we are talking about smart agriculture, we are talking about uh, uh, smart uh, parking, about smart utilities, about uh, digital uh, healthcare. So why don't we see within the MAG, for example, uh, someone from uh, uh, fr other than the te technological or the, or the scientific uh, uh, sector? Uh, I mean, uh, for example, in Lebanon, uh, we managed to have a representative from the Ministry of Health within the Lebanese MAG. We also have someone from the uh, Ministry of Municipalities, uh, from the banking sector. All these people are uh, uh, involved, they, they are all in, uh, impacted by the international internet uh, policies. I think we should try to invite or to uh, organize session related to uh, new technologies and how and the services that uh, is uh, uh, the services that are being uh, applied uh, recently in our lives. This may. Uh, bring new views, uh, engage more people, and maybe it will uh, enrich and refresh uh, the whole IGF uh, process. Thank you. Well, that's a very interesting idea, Zina, too. And maybe the way that, because you had two points, I think. One was specific to the MAG, and the other was specific to the IGF itself. But um, thinking about it specific to the MAG, the government representatives in the MAG come through UN process split by region, and there are differing processes and differing level of formalities in every one of those regions. But maybe that's something that the Secretariat, when they reach out to those um, regional processes, could in fact make it clear that, in fact, ministers from um, different um, uh, ministries um, would actually be uh, very welcome and, in fact, useful in terms of broader diversification as well. So maybe that's something we can do for that. And then I think to your other point on, on diversity, I think there's a number of um, things we all could do and we should certainly look at later as we work to ensure that we've got appropriate di diversification on the, on the um, sessions and, and workshop panels. But I like the first idea. Um, uh, next in the queue was Kenta, or is Kenta? Oh, okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm Kenta Motsuki, uh, the acting, acting MAG member from business community. Uh, first of all, I appreciate Ambassador Schneider's presentation and the Chair's initial remarks uh, this morning. I fully support most of the key takeaways, and yes, my level of appetite for the more innovative IGF is high because we have ever heard the IGF for more than 10 years, and everywhere we have to take a trial and error approach for a more successful IGF, but under inclusive, transparent, and impartial procedures within our mandate. Now, I'm gonna make comments on four points. Uh, first, uh, actually, uh, before coming here, I attended the uh, Inter Internet Governance Conference of Japan and listened to various opinions and impressions from Japanese participants uh, in the last year's IGF. And uh, many participants say that there are so many sessions uh, in parallel that they could not participate even in some interesting sessions. Um, at the same time, they say there are a lot of similar workshops of platformers, regulations, or fake news, uh, whose content and discussion points were almost the same. Um, in addition, according to them, some of the discussions were very superficial and it seems like they really wanted to see more in-depth discussions on various issues including timely and hot topics. I understand that there is a concern that newcomers may not follow such in-depth discussions, uh, but we have to think about who the newcomers are. Normally, if someone participates in the IGF, it means that he or she has some interest in internet-related public policy issues. And in most cases, he or she has fundamental knowledge of such issues. So I do not think that we should avoid in-depth discussions for the newcomers. Further, uh, Japanese stakeholders say there are too many NRI sessions and they could not understand why. While I am a founder of NRIs and I strongly support such initiatives, 
We have to reconsider the number of NRI's collaborative sessions and main sessions as well. And it might be better that both collaborative and main sessions are subject to a market evaluation process. And regarding the participation of governments and the private sectors, I completely support what Susan from the United States and other states, and we have to think about how to increase the number of participants from both sectors. In this regard, as Ben said in this morning, we have to think about how we can give them some incentives to attend the IGF, like speaking slots. From the perspective, it might be a good idea to divide an open forum into two and have a government-led forum and industry group-led forum whose selection processes are the same as that of a workshop. But this is just mere, my mere opinion, so please do not take seriously, though. <laughs> Um, uh, a third point regarding the overarching theme and some themes, as well as the selection of workshops, I fully support what Valentina, Arnold, and others said in order to reduce the number of sessions as well as to avoid the risk of overacting. First, and finally, uh, with regard to Geneva messages, as Christian from Canada and others said yesterday, I fully support it and we should continue and even expand the method while more advertisement will be necessary. I took the lead of main session on digital economy in the last year's IGF and got involved in the drafting of our messages. It was quite useful, and as Maria said yesterday, I have been thinking about how I can bring our Geneva messages on digital economy to WTO member states, which decided to initiate exploratory work on the rulemaking of the trade aspect of e-commerce. I have been working together closely with our government and hope I will, be, I will have a chance to make a presentation in front of trade negotiators. I respectfully request each MAG members to think about bringing all or some of the previous Geneva messages to each decision makers so that the decision makers can reflect the result of our previous IGF into their policy or road making. Thank you. Thank you, Kenda. That was a very rich um, set, of, set of suggestions. Um, appreciate it, thank you. We'll come back and see where we think we might have some kind of broader consensus in the room in just a few minutes. Um, next in the queue, I have Jennifer. Jennifer, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, for granting me the floor. Um, my name is Jennifer Chung, for the record. Um, speaking on your uh, question this morning to the MAG, um, Bold innovation is something that should be taken up by the MAG, not just in the you know, IG process. This was heard from the community input yesterday, as well as the written input that we received. Um, echoing the really apt metaphor that Rudolph used this morning, modern art is bold. It, there can be many fresh ways to experience and enjoy internet governance from newcomers to even very long-standing and seasoned members of the IG community. So maybe just three brief points. Um, we heard a lot yesterday about themes and also this morning. Um, I think that there is a very good um, uh, suggestions by colleagues this morning to, to focus on themes. Uh, having this focus would really bring together a cohesive um, program uh, going forward. And also, uh, the devils are always in the details. How we can do it in the mag in a very fair and balanced manner is something we have to pay very close attention to. Um, perhaps there could be something done on the back end by the Secretariat to code this information when we receive it, but of course I'm not going to go into this discussion now. Um, just a very practical example, in the Asia Pacific Regional IGF this year, they have introduced a webinar for the community on how to put together proposals, from themes to ensuring a full range of balanced stakeholders, as well as in innovative workshop formats. So we don't have workshops of panels with speeches and prepared slides for, you know, that's not something valuable for participants. Um, perhaps there could be something that could be um, considered. Um, this is very valuable to newcomers to the IG space because we want to be as welcoming as possible. Um, so my second point is there's a lot of input as well this morning, um, as well as yesterday, on the value of the NRIs in the internet governance ecosystem. So the proliferation of these initiatives have really greatly enhanced and broadened the internet governance dialogue. Many of these initiatives have grown up in, in an organic, bottom-up, multi-stakeholder 
and non-hierarchical way. And this linkage really greatly enhances the IG ecosystem as we know it. And I think the MAG needs to be very um, cognizant of this fact, and I'm sure a lot of MAG members do, do echo this thought that I have as well. And uh, I guess my third uh, very brief point is the outputs. Um, I heard a lot of input yesterday about, you know, we have outputs from the IGF. We have outputs that are in the form of um, intercessionals. We have output in the forms of workshop reports. How we can package and analyze this is the most important. I think Ben um, said this morning, if we can make this easily searchable and useful for further dissemination, we can, make this even better. Um, how and by whom this can be done could be discussed by the MAG. In addition, the Geneva Messages is a very welcome innovation in addition. There is a really rich trove of data and output from the IGF and all the intercessional works. So it is how we can pick it up and use it in a valuable manner, which is most important. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jennifer. I think the, the last one that talks to the, the kind of the trove of in terms of past information is is a project that's worthy in and of itself in terms of how we can do that. I think there's some very useful things we can learn from the Geneva messages, and I think Thomas wants to slur that we can absolutely apply going forward and maybe even to some additional parts of 2017 without a lot of... Thomas, you want the floor? Thank you, and sorry for stepping in. I have to disappear in five minutes for a, an urgent meeting, but I'll be back uh, hopefully very soon. Uh, about the Geneva messages. They are something that we produced as an offer, so use it whenever you want, whenever you think it's useful. So, and, and also see how people, how we can maybe improve them, make them even more precise. Just one comment about the merging of, of the workshops. Uh, there's, as, as you have just said, the devil lies in the details. Uh, everybody's complaining that there are too many workshops at the same time, too many parallel meetings. On the other hand, from something that we hear that we need to take in mind by many people is that those who need to get funding to come, they somehow need to be able to say that they have a role. So this is a reason for many to say, if I'm the organizer of a workshop or if I'm a panelist on a workshop, that gives me a reason to apply for funding. But I mean, this is a problem that can be overcome. So instead of saying I'm, an, I'm a panelist, if you say I'm a speaker, that doesn't mean you're sitting on a panel, but nevertheless, you have a very important role to speak. Or if you say I'm a co-organizer instead of I'm organizing my own workshop and so on and so forth. So we can merge. Uh, maybe have less things in parallel, but we need to keep in mind what the reasons are why we always end up with having too many workshops and too many things in parallel, and then maybe find solutions for these reasons that help us to, to merge. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. And you are free to jump in at any point in time. Uh, as Thomas says, he has to step out at um, 3.30 for roughly a half hour or so, but then he'll, um, he'll come back. Um, next in the queue was Israel. Yes, thank you, Chair. Israel Rosas, for the record. Mm. Uh, just to, to build on my past intervention, uh, I uh, had a, a feedback from uh, Samantha Dickinson via Twitter about the, the yearly publication of the yearly um, proceedings of the IEF. Perhaps this is a, the, a first step towards a more friendly publication or more friendly format, I don't know. And uh, on, the other, on the other side, um, thinking about uh, the newcomers' uh, involvement, perhaps, and I'm thinking just out loud, uh, we could uh, try to promote a newcomers' uh, session during the day zero, facilitated perhaps by, by the Secretariat and some uh, MAG members, uh, some kind of uh, introductory session like the orientation session for, for new MAC members, perhaps it could be a, a good option to try to involve the, the, the newcomers to, to every meeting. Thank you. I think your um, last point in particular is, is important and we should take that up as a separate subject because there have been a couple of different forays to try and support newcomers as they, they come in and we should I think maybe do some postmortems on those experiences over the last few years and maybe see what we do going forward, but it's a very critical um, critical piece. Um, I think there's a similar discussion, by the way, on youth, and I know Anya and, and some other folks are, are, are um, in the process of some consultations that actually look at youth and what's the right way to, to bring in and engage youth deeply, and I think in um, maybe a few more weeks or a month they'll be uh, ready for that. 
And just while we're talking about communications, and because I remember, I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but I saw pop up in my email um, some, uh, there was a workshop and there were some surveys and polls done, which is how do you talk about internet governance to family and friends? And they've actually just published a report, and I'm, I'm like dying to read it because I'm sure we've all had discussions where we're talking to people and their eyes glaze over within you know, like 30 seconds or something. And so um, I think that could also, I'm very, very hopeful of the work, having seen the, the surveys and things, that, it, that it's useful and something we can build off of going, going forward as well. Um, <clears throat> next, um, we have Renata and then Tamea. Renata? Renata is remote or online, so. G, I'll put you in at the queue at the end, but we were trying to close it to move to the next section. So, Renata? Y yes, on behalf of Renata, uh, she, sent, uh, she sent us a, m a message that she wants us to read it. Uh, I'd like to address the blog theme, intersessional and increased participation from various stakeholders. Perhaps intersessionals could consider having a standing committee of subject experts with geo stakeholders and gender balance. This would be good for outreach to several SGs. The topic digital economy is an important per pervasive uh, one and could be transversal also in presence and formation of those expert panels. Thank, Thank you, you, Renata. That's a, a very interesting, very interesting idea. Uh, Timea, you have the floor. Thank you, um, Chair. This is Tima Shutov speaking. Um, sorry, I'll try to be very brief. Um, just to highlight a few ideas that I heard from colleagues today and yesterday. Um, one, better communication and marketing. Two, less parallel sessions. And three, better and more engagement from governments and the private sector. And just a few ideas on how we could implement some of these suggestions. One would be to continue to build on what has been done before, create a searchable repository, if you will, of existing outputs of IGF, like the policy work by the BPF and the CNB, but also the countless session reports um, and main session reports, and perhaps find innovative ways to highlight unwritten outputs of the IGF, like case studies of success stories of cooperative projects that took root at the IGF as well. Um, another thing that I would like to highlight, um, perhaps having topical sessions um, would be better. I find it easier to explain internet governance um, and the IGF to those who are not yet part of this community through topics that are already on their agenda. So we have to make sure we have something to offer for every community um, that we would like to see at the IGF so that they can have something to discuss and engage on. And then um, I would like to get behind the idea and it was said before, to have well-defined teams, three or four maybe, um, that can be gathered from workshop tags, for example, that we analyze every year and see how we can group sessions and workshops around those teams. And then perhaps we can have a fifth one um, to allow for emerging issues and hot topics. So these would be a couple of ideas that I would like to highlight. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Tamea. That's very, very helpful. G, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I just want to uh, share a little bit uh, best practice uh, in terms of uh, interaction between uh, different uh, stakeholders in, in China. In the past, uh, different stakeholders from China, of you know, from Asia, we are very, very much is divided and separated. Uh, people don't know each other and talk to each other. But uh, since the the Geneva IGF at the end of last year. Um, some of our colleagues, they uh, take the initiative to set up uh, uh, chat, chatting groups uh, on, the mob, on the smartphone and uh, um, no, uh, uh, officials from uh, different government ministries, from different uh, institutions, uh, universities, they are put into the same group so people are in constant contact with each other, they share new ideas and in the latest development and the coordinate on joint projects. So uh, we are, indeed, we are really taking advantage of the uh, latest development of science and technology for, for such efforts. And 
I don't know uh, how uh, if we can use uh, you know the other countries they can use such kind of uh, system uh, Facebook or uh, other networks to 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 establish such kind of mechanism but uh, WeChat is really good and I I advise uh, colleagues from other countries to download a WeChat app from uh, you know, it works on Android system and Android system and uh, Apple system, uh, uh, both systems, and it's really a good uh, networking platform. It uh, it is much user friendly than WebEx. Thank you. Thank thank you. I actually wonder if there's um, a small case study um, where you might outline um, what you actually just talked about with respect to that project, so we understand what some of the parameters are. Of it, I mean, the, the platform's not so important. I think what's so important is, what's more important is uh, how the idea came about, what is encouraging people to do that, and what's the benefit that they're actually getting from that project. So that might be something which would be to try tie one of Tamea's earlier points in and and really um, pull in some learnings um, other parts of the world as well would be useful. Um, let me, I, I want to move in a moment to sort of um, a discussion of prioritization and and main themes, and hopefully those all come together. I do want to try and just underline a few things that I think there's sort of some emerging agreement on, although I think we don't need, it's not really um, necessary at this point in the process to, to dive into a lot more detail on them. So um, for, for instance, there's certainly a lot we've heard about um, communications and marketing, and that's actually very, very broad, and I think we should um, come back to that at another point and figure out what we can all do, maybe go through the transcript, and I've taken my own notes, I'm sure others have, and kind of pull together the set of suggestions we've had so far so we can have a, a, a coherent discussion around the, the comms and marketing components. I did hear a lot of support for carrying the um, Geneva messages concept forward. Um, I would guess that going forward they're probably called IGF messages or something. Um, I think from those of us that participated in that process last time, there's um, probably some things we can do to continue to evolve them appropriately. But I also think the idea that maybe we would apply them to more sessions than just the main sessions is also an interesting idea. So I think those are some of the things we can talk about going forward. But it, it's, it sort of seemed like, as one of the major kind of innovations, if you will, last year, that there's support for um, continuing that and evolving it appropriately as we go forward. Let me just see if there's anybody that wants to object to that kind of call for, you know, my, my reading of sort of the agreement I think we have in the room. Does that seem fair? And I, on, on online, I will look in the chat room as well and um, ask for Anya's help in staying on top of that too. Is that sort of a fair summary of kind of the Geneva Messages innovation, Hamina? Thank you, Chuck. Can I just offer a very minor modification, mm -hmm. which is the Geneva messages, yes, like you said, extending from the main session to the other sessions, but perhaps later if we do agree on these thematic areas or thematic focus, maybe messages by theme also might be useful because people often search by theme for key things. Right. Now, I think that's a very useful, um, and I think every one of these are really big discussions because we could also say that if we, um, were one of the CSDD working group for improvement suggestions was that each one of the sessions should be very specific about the policy questions they're meant to address. If we actually did that a little more um, consistently and a little more specifically and drove our sessions to address those, that would obviously make a nice segue into the messages as well and the themes. So I think there's a whole, a, a whole thread of discussion we can have around what can we do to kind of immediately make what's happening in the, the IGF and probably hopefully even um, you know national IGFs and some of the other um, activities more immediately useful and also that obviously supports a, um, you know an output in some marketing communication going forward too. So I think there's a lot of things we've touched upon there and that's obviously a, a key area. Um, the other one we've heard is we've heard said differently uh, lots of requests for um, prioritization, focus, um, sometimes people say lesser sessions, which lesser parallel tracks, which to me is sort of the same thing as a prioritization or, or a focus. We've had a number of suggestions over um, 
again, all of the processes, the stock taken from the IGF, the compilation, the open mics, the consultations here, et cetera, which actually um, I, I think would suggest um, a, a different approach to at least some parts of the IGF program, which might be, you know, we could use words like a little more thoughtful. Some people use the word curated. Some people talked about coming in sideways while we also do the bottom up. But I, whatever, what I, my takeaway from that is that people are saying that the, the MAG should um, be even more thoughtful about the, the program we're putting together, how it streams, how it fits, what the intent is. Um, you know, make sure there's a, an, a, both an appropriate mix of themes and also not too many. But that wasn't said all that um, elegantly, but I think there's a, um, a whole series of, we had, you know, one, one day um, streams by topic and we've had suggestions that we might actually have a theme but spread it across several days. Those are all to me the same thing because that implies that the MAG has to step in a little bit more and really kind of, kind of um, nurture or curate the overall program a little, a little bit more. But maybe the next thing to do would be to, to talk about um, main themes. If we think that the main themes actually have some alignment to key areas of focus, small number, uh, smaller number of topics, um, we, if, if we could have a, um, a uh, session on the main themes, we could see how, you know, what, what sort of things we come up with, um, and then that might actually lead us into determining how we might actually tie some of the other pieces of the, the program work to those main themes, which might be a way to to kind of back in, if you will, to a kind of a structural discussion, but do it around specific topics. So I see um, we have Raquel and Liesel and G just put his flag up here as well. So I'll stop there and let me get some comments um, in terms of the next steps. So uh, Raquel, you have the floor. Yes, thanks, Madam Chair. Um, I apologize first that I had to also drop off. That's the pitfall of having the whizzes. I had a panel to cover, but uh, um, uh, I actually uh, raised my hand before, but it, you gave the perfect scenario to make my comments, which were based on the topic approach or the thematic approach that is needed for the IGF, and it comes together with uh, the idea of having less sessions and, and less repetitive discussions and and not having the same speakers all over. Um, I do agree that we we need to have this, uh, and in my experience, uh, it's much better, and I think Timea tackled on this. Uh, if you put out a team and uh, people are intending to participate, and uh, the idea of merging them all together. So work day one morning, we are going to tackle uh, cybersecurity. And then all the workshops, all main sessions uh, are going to feed into this, the intersessional work. Uh, this would make one, people uh, attending the sessions and not being all over the place. Um, it also helps uh, on preparing for the IGF and on bringing the high level attendance that we spoke about yesterday also. Uh, we could do uh, perhaps two uh, parallel sessions if needed, but uh, the thematic approach if needed. Uh, but I think that's more than that. We are going to spread the audience. We are going to dilute the discussions of the IGF. And then we can combine with the other ideas regarding um, the Geneva messages or the IGF messages as we, we, we make them, uh, them happen. And, and by now, um, that's my, my main point. Thank you, Raquel. Liesel, you have the floor. And Liesel, maybe just for a moment, if, if you could just, because you weren't here this morning, went through introductions. I know, apologize just, for that. No, 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 you I was were, going you, to go ahead and do that. You were at, you were at the WISIS forum, and I know we've had people <laughs> in and out. I, I think you're the only other person that we haven't pulled in. So maybe if you can just say the name, the sure. country, affiliation, and we've also asked people if they can to say a few minutes, or what, a few words about why the IGF is important, why it matters to them. But if that's putting you oh, on the spot, woof. you okay. can always come back to that later. <laughs> um, well, first of all, good afternoon, everyone, and apologies for not being here this morning at, well, during the introduction time. And I don't really mean to make take time but um, to do that, but Lynn, at your invitation, my name is Liesl Franz. I'm with the U.S. Department of State, and I'm in the Office of the Coordinator for Cyber Issues. This is my third year on the MAG, but my it will be my 13th IGF. 
uh, participated in a lot of the planning processes as a non-MAG member and observer as well. Um, I mean, I think that the cumulative conversation that we've had over the course of the past couple days reflect why the IGF is important to me, certainly, but also to, uh, to the U.S. as the premier uh, global multi-stakeholder forum for uh, global dialogue on Internet public policy issues, as um, my colleague uh, Susan said yesterday. Um, but I think the richness of the dialogue that happens there, as other people have said, inform other processes in, and, um, in government, but also in um, other uh, stakeholder endeavors as well. So for us, it's a very rich platform. Um, I think that's probably it on the intro side, but I just wanted to react, and apologies for taking the mic sort of after you've uh, done a nice summary, Lynn, but perhaps I could just touch on a couple things. Um, one is I tend to get a little bit um, um, mechanical, I suppose, in how things um, are, are going to work. And I think that um, with the fantastic ideas and, and thoughts about being um, a little bit more voracious, I suppose. They're having more appetite for uh, innovation as we look toward the next IGF, or boldness. I think that there are tools that we can use to do that. One may be um, reducing the number of uh, parallel sessions. I won't even just say workshops, but sessions that are happening at any one time so that each of the ones that are happening are uh, as robust as they can be, both in content and in participation and interaction. Um, so that may be an, an, an interesting way to, to, to provide that. It would require some discipline on our part as the MAG and uh, some communication with the community, but I think those aren't insurmountable. I think also we have a great tool that's gotten better and better each year in the, in the uh, workshop proposal form and the workshop proposal process that we can continue to improve and curate or um, utilize as a tool for trying to uh, um, integrate the various aspects of the IGF life, whether it's the intercessional work, it's the NRIs, um, it's messages, however we want to, um, we can use that tool, but then we have to actually utilize the output of that tool in our own deliberations. Um, and on, I guess I just have a question that I'd like to pose as we think about the, um, uh, what, uh, you know, Thomas has put forward in, in the concept of the Geneva Messages. To be honest, I, like others in the group, I really wasn't aware of its happening <laughs> at the IGF, even being on the MAG, and I wasn't, it wasn't a focus for me. Um, so if we're going to utilize something like uh, Geneva messages or IGF messages or something like that, perhaps we can explore that a little bit more for what it would mean as we go forward. Um, and I only say that now because I know that there's some momentum around. I, I can feel some momentum in the room about uh, utilizing them, but I don't exactly know how they came about how they were used, how we could use them, or how people are feeling about it. So I would just like to table that as we go forward to think about how best to do something like that for, for looking ahead. Thank you. And maybe um, at an appropriate point, we could um, either Thomas or Chengatai or something talk a little bit about what the process was last year, just so we have that as a, 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 a consistent understanding. Um, and if we can do that before we leave and go home tomorrow, I think that would be good because we at least have the benefit of everybody's attention while we're, while we're here. <laughs> no. Um, okay, thank you, Liesl. Those are good, good comments. Rasha, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Oh, uh, yes, sorry. Go ahead, Rasha, and then G. You should have done. Okay. Rasha, uh, go ahead. Just on the main sessions, I think we maybe need to clarify amongst ourselves what are the objectives of the main sessions, what, what do we suppose are the differences between the main sessions and a, and a regular session. Uh, I suppose one thing is they're supposed to be more high profile. Uh, the 
obvious difference for me is they're three hours long, and I think that's way too long. Uh, I suggest that we shorten them to two hours. I would actually think that that brings, uh, brings up the likelihood of um, high-level government officials to participate because to ask them to give up three-hour chunk of their times of their time is just a, a bit too much to ask. Um, so it's either that they will come in, say their words, and leave, which means that they're not going to listen to what the other uh, stakeholders have to say, or they might not come at all. Um, and I think just everybody, including uh, everybody in the audience, just gets really tired uh, by the end of two hours. I think three hours is way too long. Um, so I, I suggest making the, the main session two hours long, and that would actually give more time to other sessions, which we hopefully would then cut the number of speakers on. So it would sort of balance itself out, or if we consider the idea of canceling day zero, so that would also help. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> um, let me just suggest that we'll go to G in a moment, and then we'll come back and finish the queue. And maybe afterwards, we can move to um, either start with a quick high-level overview on kind of the main sessions and the guidelines, if we can get prepared to put those up on screen or put them in the reference documents so people can pull them up and look at them as a basis. Um, but, but talk about the purpose of them, not at this point the duration, but, but the purpose of them, what we want to intend, what we mean when we say we have a main session. Um, and then I think quickly morph into a, what would some potential themes or topics be for those main sessions. I think that will start to get us to a, uh, hopefully a discussion on kind of prioritization and focus because if we're having a discussion around main themes, that to me that is coincident with they must be topics that we feel are important and really topical and, and worthy of the attention. So maybe we can you know, sort of get two for one at that, um, at that point. But is there anybody in the room? Normally I would have looked at uh, maybe, I don't know, Flavio, Susan, or Liesel to talk about the main session and the guideline, having done some work on some of those guidelines. Is somebody willing to do that if we pull that up in 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Maybe I'll just let you and Susan. You and Susan. You, well, well, no, we'll, we'll pull it up on the screen and we'll make sure it's in the reference document or easy to find and then um, you and Susan can confirm amongst yourselves and determine who could just, just do a quick high level introduction in terms of the, <clears throat> the, mainly the purpose, not the logistics or the mechanics or the specifics at this point, just the, the high level purpose. I mean, again, I'm, I'm kind of conscious as we do this, we, um, if you think about it, we have over half the MAG members are new and another third are only within their first year. And I know the first year is a little overwhelming, so I, I think taking some time to familiarize ourselves with some of those pieces of the process will will be helpful. And you can find them in the reference docs if you need to in the context of the um, So Chengadai is just saying that they are, in fact, in the reference documents, which are on the home page for this particular meeting there. So you can find the main session guidelines there. G, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, um, my name is Ji Hao Jun from China. Um, I'm a bit lost because colleagues are jumping from different th uh, topics to, to topics, so I don't know what, what I should I touch on. Um, first, I would like to say a few words about the main sessions. Um, it is good that we make, you know, arrange the uh, main sessions in an interactive manner, but uh, interac interaction also have its problems. You know, ministers from certain, you know, different countries have different characters, they speak different language, and to always, uh, and some of them are politically appointed. They, they are not supposed to be engaged in uh, very technical discussions. So uh, I, I'm having a, a rethinking about this, whether we should go back, go a little bit back to our traditional format, but uh, we give enough time to the ministers, a high level or the main session, uh, let them to deliver their their uh, their statement in a ceremonial manner, may, although that uh, may be not so effective, but this would encourage, you know, ministers from all countries, more more ministers to come to our annual meeting. Otherwise, you know, if if if, if we show the the last year's videos to our ministers, many ministers will be discouraged to come. Oh, this is scary, and they. 
uh, they ask so many diff difficult questions, and uh, it, it, it's it's uh, it's a problem. You know, sometimes uh, uh, really try to be better would be the enemy of good, and uh, we need to to think about that. Uh, regarding the theme of man say the, you know the the whole meeting or the main the, the main uh, the theme of the the, the main sessions um, we it 's always about the peace and the development and about uh, protection of you know uh, human rights etc and we are all our job is focused or goes around the two thousand and thirty sustainable development goal but in the past we tend to focus on the Always, we, um, most of the time, we tend to focus on the opportunities provided by the new technologies, and how do we make sure that we, people in the different countries, uh, you know, are not left behind. But uh, now, technology is developing so fast. Some some technologies have disruptive uh, effects in terms of security, employment, and even the future of the whole human race. So my view is that uh, maybe uh, next year or in the, in, in the years to come, we, we would better focusing more on the challenging side of the new technologies, the dis dis disruptive effects. And um, we, as, as, as our Swiss colleagues said, that really we need to go into the, the, the technical details, the difficult, difficult things people may not understand and also the policy and the legal issues. For example, the blockchain technology, and this is good, but uh, um, criminals and the proliferators are using this technology to, to bypass Security Council resolutions, and using this technology to do money laundering, etc., and or, or, or transfer for money uh, among different uh, members of the transnational uh, crim criminal syndicates. All these things, we, we have to think about these things. This is about the main theme. Uh, regarding the workshops, um, I found that you know, in some workshops, they have, may have eight or 10 panels, panelists, and uh, people really don't have chance to interact with them. You ask a short question, you make a little bit comments, but uh, that's, that such chance is very limited. I, w uh, on several occasions, I want to make a little bit of my own comments, but uh, uh, I was denied the chance or simply was disrupted when I s was speaking. So my suggestion that we'd better limit the number of panelists for e each workshop or, or open forum so that we can make the, 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 the workshops more interactive. And uh, another thing is about the gender balance. Um, we all know that in, in the cyber or internet world, uh, females uh, are more involved. That's a reality. And uh, to have, have a better gender balance in, in our workshops is good, but uh, we have to be realistic and don't make better you know, the enemy of good. And that, that's my, my uh, uh, impression that. Thank you. I, I'm not actually sure what Cheng and I was saying, but gender balance, just to come to the last point and work backwards, is, uh, is obviously very important um, in the world at large and certainly within the UN system as well. There's a goal of parity. That's 50-50. Um, by 2030 or so. And in fact, this year, um, one of the things that um, delayed the MAG appointment announcement was a review of the percentage of women on the, well, I think last year, these numbers are roughly right, but not uh, 100%. I think last year we might have had 41 or 42% or yeah. something, 43. Because a number of MAG, female MAG members rotated off and because the the secretary was trying to get to 50 members. We went to 39% women, which is obviously not parity parity, but it's not parity this year. It's horrible, frankly, for this space. But the, the, the UN and the secretary general is so um, insistent upon um, really paying attention to gender balance and improving that um, there was actually insistent that we go back and 
I, I say we only because I was involved in trying to explain the process when you work for the community processes and four of them, the output you get at the top is not something you can just go back and change quickly. Um, but the secretariat and the secretariat's office actually work to see what they can do to drive the balance different. That was one of the reasons, as Changatai said the other day, we're, we're um, back up to 55 MAG members and at 46 percent um, women here. So um, I, mean, I, I think it's clear that it can be done. And I only underline that because I don't think we ever want to look for excuses to walk away from things that people are saying is important and, frankly, only fair. Yeah, no, I was just going to say that um, as far as the attendees were concerned, it was 43%. So I think we can translate those into the panelists. I mean, we should be able to hear 43% of the attendees were female, so, yeah. Mm. That's a very good point as well. Mm -hmm. um, um, some of your other points I think will actually come to G as we actually um, move forward with the various, you know, main theme or um, one other point, though, in the, in the beginning, um, I think there was a conflation between the opening ceremony and main sessions. Typically within um, an IGF program, assuming three-hour slots, there have been eight main blocks. One of those is used for um, the official opening ceremony, where the premises are turned over to the UN, and there's been a high-level, um, that's where the high-level speeches came in, and then there's been a closing ceremony on the last day, which leaves six sessions in the middle that were called main sessions. Those were actually determined by the MAG. Previously, would say, we think we need a, a main session on this important theme or this important topic. And the MAG actually had, takes responsibility for defining that theme, defining the topic, driving the session and, and staffing it. When we say main theme, we're talking about that, that section in the middle. There is still another discussion to be had on the opening ceremony um, because the point you make is one that's made very often, which is if you want um, VIPs, really high-level people to attend, they tend to insist on speaking slots. Um, so what the uh, Swiss did this year was try to find a way, similar to what WISIS Forum is experimenting with across the, the way there, to allow these individuals to have um, senior roles but in a way that actually is of interest to, to the participants. As like I said, the, the funny thing about nobody wants to sit through 40 speeches of five minutes long, but everybody wants one. You know, I was over there yesterday because, you know, trying to do some outreach for the IGF. There were less than 100 people in the room of an event that has 2,000 or so. Um, so I think we've got some, uh, another set of discussions to have on both the opening ceremony plus the VIP and how do we both get more VIPs in and what's the right level of engagement with them. But I think we should just keep the main session, small number of themes separate for the moment from the uh, opening ceremony, how do we attract VIPs. But maybe before you leave today, if there's anything that we want to come back on in that last session, we do that while Thomas is, is here with us. Um, right now in the queue, I think we had quite a queue growing. Um, Rush has already sp spoke. Um, Sylvia? Thank you, ma'am chair. I have uh, four points that I want to make. Um, uh, several of the, I'm a new MAC member, but I've been involved in supporting the IGF since the uh, WISIS, um, since before <laughs> IGF. And uh, one of the things that I've been um, hearing uh, a lot is about tagging, cataloging, and collecting and analyzing uh, sessions, outcomes, trying to track uh, outcomes that are produced after the IGF and uh, with the, the due respect of the secretariat, uh, I, I, and I, I don't really know this, the latest uh, status of, of this initiative, but uh, maybe some of you remember the Friends of the IGF website that was done back in 2013 as an effort, as a community effort to be given to the IGF uh, to track, uh, tag, and, and uh, catalog and organize the, um, the resources that were available at the time. And there was plenty of ideas about other things to add to them, so like blog articles, books, things that all the speakers at different uh, IGFs were able to put together, and it had a simple search engine. And it um, evolved into, into a very interesting project. Um, and I, if I remember, my memory doesn't fail me, uh, 
the reason why it was not possible to adopt it uh, or embed it somehow into the, the proceedings of, of the IGF were some set of uh, UN rules that didn't allow that to happen, if I don't remember correctly. So I, I think it would be um, interesting to, to remember that there are efforts done by the community in the past, but there are also restrictions on how we can participate in that process and maybe um, the enthusiasm of the community um, sometimes um, doesn't, there is no way to translate it into something that works in this space, let's say. So it would be good to know like what can be done and when, what cannot so that the su su suggestions that we make and the work that we put up to um, as volunteers to help this out um, is not um, uh, gone to waste. It is, it is a really interesting tool uh, that I, I think the, uh, if I, maybe Susan uh, Chalmers can mention something later because uh, she, she was uh, the leading force behind it, I can, can talk a little bit more about it. But uh, um, it was a very good way of uh, marketing and packaging uh, results of the IGF that actually helped to raise money for the IGF. And uh, as we go into a conversation around funding, packaging results is one of the things that the sponsors and donors would like to see to be able to contribute to this process. My second point is about the Geneva messages and the role of rapporteurs. Um, I think that the role of rapporteurs in the UN system, it is very, very important, uh, probably not the way it is applied to the workshop uh, sessions that a rapporteur is basically doing a summary of the workshop that it is, it could be like the, uh, the ones that are on the Geneva uh, platform, for example, that you go and you, you read them and you Maybe their summary is better than the one that's a rapporteur of a session you can come up with. But my suggestion uh, would be that what if um, we consider to um, structure the role of rapporteurs around the themes that the MAG decides. So if there are themes for the conference and there is a rapporteur that is voted in or elected or assigned uh, as a group, I don't know, by the community, by the MAG, I don't know exactly what the mechanism might be, uh, then this, this role of figuring out, okay, what's going on with cybersecurity or with uh, uh, artificial intelligence, then there is someone that can actually take all those summaries and make some a contribution from the NRIs, from the uh, dynamic coalitions, from the, the working groups, from wherever that contribution comes from. So it is a summary that actually is a rapporteur on the subject for the conference. Then my third point, coming back to our colleague uh, from China, is twofold. Um, he um, highlighted how important it is to focus on the challenges that the internet technology is faced. And um, although I, I, I agree that there are many challenges, I have spent half of my life working to connect people of, on, to the internet, and I don't want to spend the other half before I retire not scaring the hell out of people so that they actually do get connected. So yes, I value and I appreciate, the, and I have apologies for the language, but that gets me worked out. Um, it, is, it, is a, it is very important that we always highlight the positive impact that the internet has in the lives of people. No government, no donor, no private company wants to be involved in pornography ring, uh, our credit card uh, cloning system, uh, no one wants to go those ways. If we only focus on all the bad things that happen on the internet, we will not save it, let's say. We will only restrict it. So I, I really hope that, yes, challenges are discussed and uh, all the bad things that happen on the internet are discussed and on the cybersecurity aspects, we focus on how to manage those but that we always keep track that we are here to try to connect the unconnected, we are here to try to connect the next billion, we are using the internet as a tool to achieve all of the SDGs. So it is mentioned across. So it, it will it would like be, be like shooting ourselves on the foot if we just go on the direction of only tackling the bad stuff uh, or the challenges only. Uh, it is important to highlight the positive contributions that the internet makes to the lives of people. And the final one on the gender uh, balance, um, I, I think that uh, yes, diversity can be expressed in, in many different ways, geography, 
points of view, um, uh, intergenerational, uh, different abled, and you can have you can build a, a, a whole um, panel based on on that and have men that represent the different able, different nationalities, different cultures, but uh, women are half of the world population anyway. So we, you, you, you can have us or you cannot have us in, in different spaces and that doesn't mean that we are not supposed to be there. So it, it is an effort, it is a conscious effort that we all need to make to make sure that the capable, talented, skilled uh, CEOs and presidents and, and, and wonderful women that are leading the industry are part of this process. There are many uh, out there, uh, also parliamentarians uh, uh, that, that can be uh, participating in this. We just need to find them and invite them and, and entice them to be here, and they will. Thank, thank you, Sylvia. Um, to your first comment, the Friends of the IGF, my understanding is that the, the Friends of the IGF, which had been a project um, led by Susan Chalmers um, with funding from various places, is now with CGIWR. Um, and it continues to be a useful tool. Um, there are some points of kind of collaboration between the two. I think it's actually linked from the IGF website still, um, but that was the current, the current status. It wasn't possible at that point in time to pull it into the um, IGF for a couple of reasons. I think part of it was funding and resource and caretaking of it um, in terms of the resource skills. And then also, of course, doing that, you need to be ensured that it follows UN rules with respect to certain language and things like that. So that was what, um, I do think it is a very useful tool and we should, should make sure we're doing as much with it as possible. Um, Gee, I don't think um, Sylvia was really responding directly in a way that really requires a response back. I think it was more kind of talking to the kind of environment we're actually looking for generally here on a number of topics and things, so. Okay. Okay, Gee, you have the floor, exceptionally. Okay, thank you, Madam. Um, when I talk about uh, we focus on challenges, I don't mean that uh, we are not encouraging people to make, you know, make more use of the new technologies. What I mean is that, like for example, Jack Ma is trying to open shops without attendance, and you can, you know, all the items are there, but nobody is serving you. That means that if if such kind of shops proliferate, you know, in the future all the shops are without attendance, many people lose their job. That's what I mean. Um, you know, the, the, the challenging or disruptive side of the technologies. Uh, when I say that we should be realistic about gender balance, I don't want to make, my, make myself enemy of the females in this room. Um, but, you know, um, we, should, we should try our best to, to strike a better balance uh, 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 among, uh, you know, of different genders. But uh, sometimes, uh, it happens that uh, on certain topics, it is sim simply very difficult to find a female or other gender experts to talk. And we, we have to respect the reality. That's it, thank you. Well, I, I do appreciate the attention giving to it and, and the effort you know, as we work to address all the diversity balances. So thank you. Thank you, G. Uh, next in the queue was Omar. Omar, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's also difficult sometimes to find a male expert to talk about a certain topic. So, um, yeah. Uh, you're welcome. My name is Omar Ansari. <laughs> and I'm from uh, a MAG member from Afghanistan. Um, Madam Chair, uh, we uh, uh, initially uh, it would happen that the MAG members would uh, propose uh, workshops and there would be speakers in too many workshops and also um, be the organizers of too many workshops. So that was kind of uh, mm, like kind of blocking others, the non-MAG members, to uh, 
uh, organize workshops and be speakers. So uh, the MAG decided to limit the uh, you know um, uh, the the MAG member activities to organizing main sessions only and some other sessions which you might want to. Uh, thank you. Uh, share with the with the uh, Mac because uh, there's a new crowd who would, might want to know uh, some details about that. Uh, but the limiting the number of uh, uh, speeches to three was for Mac members. It wasn't for others, right? So I just want to uh, build a clarity on that. Uh, if it's only for Mac members to be um, a speaker at maximum three sessions, then that's fine. If for others, I would not support that because uh, if you have an expert from, uh, you know, traveling thousands of miles and he's already there for a week, why shouldn't he or she be uh, utilized more? Um, that's uh, one issue. Number two is with the, mm, uh, there was a comment uh, about having uh, sessions on same topic at the same time, you know, like an example was given if all cybersecurity uh, sessions could be in the morning of day one. That would have, uh, uh, there would be a problem because many people would want to attend different, you know, uh, or, or follow one track on, let's say, cybersecurity. Uh, and it would be a, a little bit challenging for them to attend multiple uh, sessions on the same topic to follow the track and also for the speakers experts who will be speaking there and they would be interested to contribute to uh, different sessions at different times so if you put them at the same time or in the same day it's going to be a little bit of uh, a, a challenge let me share with you which would support my previous comment about not having uh, male experts on certain topics by 20 19, there will be about 6 million job openings in cyber information security. But only 4.5 uh, million um, uh, security professionals will be available by then. So there would be, uh, and there are uh, certain areas where we don't have any experts. So if we have one expert and not giving them opportunity to speak in different sessions, that would be um, uh, quite a challenge for um, the IGF. On number of uh, uh, the duration of the main session, um, I was the co-organizer of uh, trade uh, uh, main session on trade agreements in 2016 IGF. Uh, and we were assigned two or three hours, which wasn't sufficient to complete the topic because the complexity of the topic and the diversity of the uh, speakers and the attendees in the discussion, it was quite a new topic and we weren't able to cover it, uh, give it a full coverage. I think three hours for certain se uh, sessions, when we call it a main session, there should be a difference between a main session and a workshop. Workshop is w 90 minutes. And if we make the main session like 120 uh, minutes, there won't be a big difference. Uh, another example is uh, in IGF 2017, we had the main session on, on NRIs where we had 23 uh, NRIs to speak. So now you divide the 90 minutes on 23, how much time do you get to cover a topic? So it's going to be a challenge to reduce the, uh, you know, uh, um, the time from three hours. Uh, but I would also support keep it n keeping it open to the proposer because only MAC members uh, are eligible to propose uh, organize a main session. Uh, based on the previous, uh, unless there, uh, there's been any change on that. Um, so, and then the MAC could look at the, you know, complexity of the topic, how much time would each, uh, you know, main session uh, require, and then we can decide on whether three hours should be sufficient or should we reduce it to, uh, to two hours or, uh, you know, make another decision. Thank you. Thank you, Omar.
Um, let me just uh, clarify one thing. The workshops are not necessarily 90 minutes. We use workshops as a very generic term. They could have been 30 minutes long following one of the new session formats. They could have been two hours. So um, really, the way we've, this doesn't mean what we need to go do going forward, but the main sessions were differentiated because they were themes that the MAG said were important, were worthy of MAG attention, MAG oversight, um, MAG definition, and um, therefore, I think the assumption was they required a longer slot. They also, of course, are in the bigger rooms and they get interpretation. Workshops were everything else, every other type of format of which we're trying to introduce a lot of other different types of formats and, and session formats and things. And right now what we want to talk about, I think, is not so much whether it's three hours or two hours, but really start to get to um, kind of the purpose of um, main sessions and some possible themes. So what I, I'd like to come back to what we said a few moments ago, which is complete going through the queue. Um, Susan or, or Liesl have volunteered to talk to the main sessions in terms of what their purpose is so that we all have kind of the same high level overview of how, we're, how we historically have thought about these main sessions. Again, we're talking about five-ish slots over the course of the, uh, the IGF historically. Um, and then quickly I'd like to come to some themes so we get some idea of you know, whether or not we're, we're able to come down to a, a prioritized list, which is what I assume would kind of be equated to um, the main themes, or whether or not we've got sort of 20 in front of us and we need to figure out a different process and try and bring these, these things back to closure. So um, not so much on some of the logistics or the admin pieces quite yet, but more um, purpose and intent and then possible, possible themes is, is where I think we were heading with this session. Julian, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is uh, Julian Casas Buenas, uh, MAC member. Uh, I would like to refer to for content and themes uh, and um, we would like to see the IGF focus on the internet in relation to poverty and discrimination. The internet has the potential to reduce poverty and discrimination, but it can also increase them. Emerging technologies, the increased and not always transparent use of algorithms can facilitate more effective management of data, but it can also consolidate discrimination. Access is growing, but to ensure that it is inclusive, we need to focus on those people who are still left behind. Therefore, we propose as a team and drawing on one of uh, the core uh, principles of the Sustainable Development Goals, leave no one behind. Internet governance for access, inclusion, diversity, and equality. We see these themes as uh, including the following topical challenges. Addressing exclusion in access and in policy making processes. As a community, we need to address discrimination based on gender, class, race, ability, age, and where one lives. Uh, Multi-stakeholder partnership in increasing access. Network shutdowns linguistic diversity, inclusive and participative decision-making, equal access <coughs> as in not having different internets for different people, locally owned and control access, including community network infrastructure, discrimination risks in impacts of new technologies such as artificial intelligence, algorithms, internet of things. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. That was very clear and I think comes from your, your posting as well from the other day. Uh, speaking cue, Jeremy Malcolm has the floor. Jeremy's participating remotely as well or through the voice of Anya. So yes, <coughs> sorry. Uh, Jeremy asked me to read the comment on his behalf because he has some uh, problems with the connection. So reading a comment from Jeremy Malcolm. I support the remarks that others have made about the need to be bold and innovative as a way to reinvigorate the IGF and prove its value, but deriving messages from sessions in traditional formats is not a good way to do that, because panel discussions are not intended to develop clear and precise messages. 
This requires a more actively facilitated format that is designed for deliberation upon specific questions from the outset. The Working Group on Multi-Year Strategic Work Program is considering some suggestions about methodologies that would do that and some suitable topics for such a session, but we don't have the material before us yet. So for now, I would just suggest that we set aside some time for such a main session, at least as a pilot for 2018. Given also the importance of not having too many duplicative sessions in parallel, I would like to suggest that any such new deliberative main session should not be scheduled in parallel with workshops so that the entire IGF community can come together and participate in it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Jeremy. Those were some very, very thoughtful comments as well, and there is some work ongoing in one of the, uh, the working groups. Uh, Mamadou, Mamadou, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, giving me the floor. Uh, on main team and sub team, I echo G's suggestion on going more and emerging and challenging issues pertaining the sustainability of the internet, such as cyber geopolitics, like cyber war impacting strongly the journey of the internet. Also, artificial intelligence with emerging cyber weaponization, internet and nuclear issues, child online protection, hate online speech, and fake news relating to cyber terrorism. For me, the internet is living right, living right now in dark periods, and we do need to protect it. Team and sub-team has to be aligned to those fields to clean the internet from the predators. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> taking some notes. Um, that is a very interesting, uh, very interesting um, possible theme. The next in the queue, we have Mary. Thank you, Bichira. My name is Mary Uduma, for the record. My first intervention is the way we are going, the way we are, it seems, I, I thought we would take one aspect of the process and deal with that and get done. And each person starts and we mix the theme, the structure, and um, um, other interventions. So I, I thought if we're looking at the theme, because we have only one day more to go, <laughs> that will be tomorrow, but um, notwithstanding, I, I want to support the fact that the new technologies will be one of the main focuses of uh, one of the, the focus we'll have for as theme so that we will look at how it impacts on uh, uh, the future of our children, the job, job future, like the artificial intelligence taking over the whole of the jobs. Are there some to be that are available? Although Omar has announced about six million jobs in uh, security, well, we hope that we will have capacity building to retrain people to be able to take up those um, uh, jobs that will, uh, would uh, um, be uh, available. Second, I want to look at the main session. I want to say I've worked in government, and I know that the government will want to come to uh, or go to sessions or programs or events or conferences that they are allowed to come make political statements, showcase what they are doing. So I would like us to still create, whether is the first, is the day zero, or day one or day two, whatever day it is, there should be that high level that will attract the, those that, were, that will be missing in the IGF, that is the, the high level people. So they want, even if it's two minutes or three minutes, you give them to make their statement. Apart from that, there will still be the interactive session that they, was introduced last year. So you could say is a ministerial roundtable or whatever we could look at it. So, but the first attraction, the first, the, what will incentivize government the, at the highest level is to have those statements made. Why do we have? the five of them ministers here, 
because they know that they are, they are going to showcase what they are doing in their country. So they, they still need that. We still need to figure out how we are going to do that so that we create that opportunity for the high level. For, uh, I don't want to flog the panelist thing, but um, um, I said, when um, workshop proposals or uh, proposers come up with their proposals, some of them don't have the wherewithal to fund their panelists. So if you limit it to three for everybody, at the end of the day, they will see anybody that is around. If people are, don't have money to come, anybody that is around, they could ask the person to, uh, to be one of the panelists. When I was nominated to be a panel or asked to be a panelist, I was, ask, I was looking for funding. So, but it was only when I got funding that I was able to accept and because I got funding, I was able to accept to be panelist in some other. So there are, there are, there are cost constraints related to the number of uh, um, people that will panel in uh, some of the sessions. Well, if you, are, uh, if you are limiting those of the MAG members, I can understand. But other people that come is an opportunity to save costs and just be part of the panelists. Um, what would the business people want? Bottom line, they want anything that will increase the bottom their balance sheet. Any, any discussion we're doing, any discussion we are, any topic we are looking at, the business person can only be attracted if that discussion will help increase the balance sheet. And so when we are looking at topics, we are looking at main session or workshop sessions, we should be looking at attracting those, the, the business um, community to, to IGF by giving them opportunity to come, talk about what would, uh, and sit with government. And because in my, in my, I rea realized in my country, when I went to the business people or business community to come to my IGF, uh, one of the topics is, are you, are you taking a topic that will include regulatory issues because it will affect us. So those are things, do it. So where they can, they can sit side by side with government, it's not a negotiation, but something that will, when they get back, one way or the other, they will be satisfied that the government has had them where it pains them. So those are things that we should also uh, talk about. Uh, I don't have proposed theme first, but I'm saying digital economy Artificial, I mean, uh, the uh, new technologies, and then how it affects the 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 common man on the on the on the street. So, and I also want to support what uh, uh, Julian has said. Thank you. Thank you, Mar Mary. Those are some very very helpful points. Uh, next in the queue, we have, and I'm going to um, close the. Q in a moment and see if we can again draw any kind of conclusions from what we've done here and then and then move on. Um, uh, Luis, could you add G in the Q? Thank you. Um, next we have Rudolph. Rudolph, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, first, on the on the um, organizational or structural point. I think uh, Raquel made, made an excellent point in saying we should not so much focus on the different formats that we are meeting in, but more about the themes. And if we, if we can identify those themes and have like, you know, one theme a day or, or half, a, half a day, two themes or whatever, then we can find the good structures that we deal with these issues. We can have a, dynamic coalition session on it and a main session and a workshop and actually in my view it does not really matter how we call it at the end it is important that we center it around a theme and then we have uh, the right people together uh, around these themes so that's that's the first uh, point the second point about uh, it has been said two or three times that we need some kind of a ceremonial setting for ministers, for politicians to speak. Um, I would see that, I mean, I see that point, but I would see it really on day zero 
um, as, an, as a kind of a interministerial session or whatever where ministers can you know, discuss and talk and address the audience, but not so much within the IGF. In the, within the IGF, I think we found a, quite a good format with the Swiss uh, opening uh, 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 mo mode that we, that we had. Um, that was the second point. The, the third point um, on businesses, yes, I think the balance sheet is what the business is moving and uh, we have to, I, I, I mentioned it before, we, we have to think about uh, ways how we can, how we can improve their, their appetite. And uh, on the themes, I just wanted to echo what some of uh, us have said in our view. I think uh, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things slash uh, Industry 4.0. Um, I, would, I would call the digital development, um, what has been said also around the table, um, cybersecurity and data. That's the, that's the issues that I would like to introduce. Thank you, Rudolf. Thank you. The one thing I've been trying to get to, and every time I close the queue, two more names pop up, and then I close the queue and two more names pop up. What I've been trying to get to is um, uh, Liesl and Susan to actually walk us through the purpose of the main sessions in the hope that that would actually help direct the, the theme discussion that we're starting to um, kind of morph into now a little bit more. Um, if there's nobody who's dying to speak right now but could wait and we could just go to the main session guidelines and principles at the high level, I think that would actually help inform the, the discussions. Um, so if Susan or Liesl are ready to talk to that, and we can put the, um, if there's a particular section you want us to display here, um. we can do that. And as we said, the document's actually in the references tab of the uh, meeting page. Well, honestly, I think if you are going to display, then really the first page or couple paragraphs is probably the best place to start. Now you know how the secretary <coughs> is just so effective and efficient. First of all, Shanghai jumps in and then everybody else jumps in. <laughs> it's always a great team effort. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chengatai and Eleonora. <laughs> and while that's bringing up, I, you know, while I uh, participated in the sort of revision of the main session guidelines in the last, um, you know, in preparation for the last. IGF, it really was the, the hard work of Virat Bhatia and um, Flavio, uh, uh, former MAG members that did the, the heavy lifting in the beginning. Uh, so we really just updated based on additional feedback um, over the course of, uh, of the last couple years, I guess. And in the spirit of um, you know, continuously lear learning from our processes, we can always take additional input into this. Um, but I do think that this reflects um, a lot of the work done and the experiences to date. Um, but it may well. So I hope that it does inform the discussion that you're looking for, Lynn, but it can also take into account um, innovations as well if, if, if the MAG members agree. Um, the bottom line uh, at the beginning here is the background of um, uh, sort of what the main session type of uh, um, workshop or session is at the IGF. And I think you've said it. Basically, it is um, they are typically for longer periods of time. They are organized in larger rooms. And they provide for translation in the six UN languages, which is not the case for the hundred other uh, workshops, open forums, and other sessions at the IGF. Um, and so they, and I think historically as well, they have been really a way to capture high, the high level or most general type of um, topics in the 
uh, traditional IGF themes. So whether it was, I remember one year we had privacy, openness, and security in one main session together, and then uh, access and diversity were in another main session. So critical internet resources. So those traditional themes of the IGF have been captured in some way. Um, and in the, as the years have progressed, they've gotten more um, topical within those general, within those general frames. Um, so, but because they, uh, you know, my understanding at the time was that because they were a little bit all over the place, organized with different uh, groups of us <laughs> um, in the MAG and observers, uh, that there was a desire to um, make them a little bit more um, synergistic or similar in construct and organization, but more importantly, make them open for input from the community about what they would want to um, see in main sessions, topics that they would want to see in main sessions, as well as having some input into the main session um, participants, discussions, direction, and all of that. So that was, I think, a, a major impetus for putting together main session guidelines. Um, so you'll see here it talks a little bit about the, um, the organization of it mean, being meaningful and timely um, to deliver value to the community. It, I think I alluded to harmonize approaches and create a structured approach for developing the main sessions um, and the ability to uh, intake input from the community. Um, then there, were a, there was a desire to reflect uh, a set of principles for um, the themes and the topics and how those were uh, uh, developed, how the organization of the main session uh, uh, would go, um, and requirements for main session organization. So the first requirement, of course, is to adhere by the, the principles which uh, cover such issues as being contemporary and relevant, being topical um, uh, subject matter, uh, align with the theme or reflect a new theme. Um, there was a, a desire to reflect concern for or relevance to developing countries as well as developed countries on topics. Um, engendering a wide range of interest. So the kinds of things that even though it's not a hierarchical sense of main sessions versus um, um, the workshops or other sessions at the IGF, but to, to be as um, inclusive and, uh, um, and have wide ranging interest because the nature of the main session was its bigger rooms, it has the translation. So to have more relevance to a broader group. The section, I, I don't know if you want to go through or people can reference the requirements for the main session organization. And again, this was informed by uh, you know several years of, tr of, of uh, volunteers in the MAG and uh, others putting them together um, that reflected the idea, the, all the goals of harmonization, structure and organization, and importantly, inclusiveness with the with the with the community. So it includes things uh, like that uh, the be a mag member, mag members that are co-organizers, but there are mag members and members of the community that can participate and provide input and that there is a process of providing that input in an open, in an open way. And then some structure on, um, of course, reflecting the diversity requirements of the, of the IGF um, from stakeholder group, gender, geography, and perspective. Actually, we captured perspective in there as well. I think someone made a comment about that earlier today. Um, and also including youth and elderly and persons with disabilities. Really, the whole the the whole gamut of being inclusive, um, and then some description of role of MAG members as co-organizers and facilitators, perhaps, but not uh, not in the spirit of not having MAG members speak on every session. Uh, that was reflected here as well. Um, and then finally, a report for the for a summary report that would contribute to the products of the IGF, the chair summary, the taking stock and main session reporting, and things like that. 
Then the uh, part two, um, I'll just touch on this briefly. Um, there were several MAG members that had a lot of input in, a lot of experience with organizing main sessions um, and wanted to put forward some uh, of the, of the um, value of their experience and challenges that they may have had and how to address some of those. So there is a section in part two on uh, recommendations for considerations for those um, that uh, as they want to be involved in the main session organization and planning. Happy to answer any questions or I certainly, others have been very involved in planning and organizing main sessions or were involved in the, the development of the the guidelines. Thank you, <coughs> Liesl. Um, last year, we kicked the call for workshops off um, with basically relying on TAG, a real focus on being um, community-led, community-driven, bottom-up. And we basically had one overarching main theme, and the sub-themes were subsequently determined by um, looking at the workshops that had been selected by the MAG. The main sessions, um, we, we sort of left a little bit later in the process to determine. I'm not sure that was by intent or just by sort of scheduling. But ultimately, there was a proposal that said, and I don't want to have the kind of NRI DC discussion now, but ultimately, there were sort of four slots that were left. We ought to have one from sort of a private sector topic, one maybe from technical, one from um, uh, uh, kind of a geopolitical or something, which is a cybersecurity or, and the people were fairly unhappy with that process last year for a whole host of reasons. So coming out of last year's process, the MAG said this year we should get an earlier start on it and we should be really thoughtful about what are the, the themes, the topics we think are really important for this IGF going forward. Um, and let's have a discussion on what those are. Let's choose those, um, structure those, um, you know, really well and do that in a really thoughtful way, if you will, with a mag. And it just went in second, Liesl. And then, um, you know, what we had thought a, a few minutes ago was maybe we've had heard lots of discussions on prioritization and focus, and we talked about what some of the things. We, have I think, have good consensus on less parallel sessions, less repetitive sessions. I, I took a bunch of notes. There were some other things we had agreement on um, but nobody we weren't quite certain how to process through the prioritization the focus discussion and we said maybe we can do that if we start to have a discussion on what are a couple of the the main themes or the main topics we think it's really important um, to have in the IGF to have in next year's program and then we can start to figure out how we might structure the program around them that was where we started this this discussion on um, that was some of the feedback we'd started to get through this process. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that that's what we still want to do in terms of moving forward here is continue to focus on, you know, what is a relatively small number of areas, topics that we feel are so important that they should be sort of front and center um, in the IGF. And that may mean a um, main theme. It may mean there's a different treatment somewhere in the workshop program, but we were hoping to get some topics out. We've had probably seven or eight that have come out over the course of the suggestions that have come out over the course of the discussion in the last hour or so. I wonder if the room is still, um, you know, supportive of that process and still interested in trying to get to some list of possible themes or topics, and then we can see how much alignment we have on them um, and begin structuring the rest of the program around that. Um, Liesl, I'll let you come in. We'll go back to the queue in a moment if we need to. Thanks, Lynn. And, and your comments there about sort of how to pick the topics and things like that reminded me that, in fact, the main session guidelines, while they have some general principles for selecting the topics, um, it's not very prescriptive in that sense. And I think that's because over the course of years, it's, um, you see that there are different ways to try to uh, discern them to being topical and timely, that kind of thing is the principle of the thing, but it doesn't give you the exact topic. We did try um, uh, a, um, tried to put in place a structured approach a couple years ago to 
take the input from the community based on the tags that they indicated on their workshop proposals to um, determine what might be the most popular topics of the of the of interest to the community that year. So that's what I recall being tried tried to operationalize that a little bit more than the way you described it with regard to sort of stakeholder focuses or or um, um, type of pro, pro, uh, proposals, but it probably is was a little bit of both or evolved from one to the other. But I just wanted to reflect that that desire at the time to utilize the tags and perhaps that also delayed some of the process. But it was um, in, intended in that way. Yeah, no, very, very clearly we did want to use the tags. We yes. are in com complete agreement. Um, I think what happened was then we had a, a number of individual proposals for main sessions that came up from MAG members. We had far too many proposals for main sessions for the slots that were actually available, and we started a discussion where everybody was trying to, um, you know, sort of pitch for their proposal. And that's when the discussion reverted to, okay, if we've got so many more proposals, it makes sense to have one which is of interest to the private sector, or another one that makes of interest. So it wasn't, it wasn't that we set out to drive the process that way. It was more a kind of accommodation um, after we found that we had more proposals than slots, and that's what we were trying to, to fix. Totally agree that we were trying to build it up from the tags. And, you know, that's certainly another option, um, but if for all the discussions we've been having, the MAG wants to be a little more prescriptive around the things that are um, visible, or we want to prioritize or focus on um, a set of critical topics, which is what's come through a lot of the input we've had again, through all the channels, then I think we need to have a conversation up front where the MAG actually expresses an opinion on what some number, three, four, five of those critical <coughs> themes are. And I'm kind of making the correlation that says we think topic X is a critical enough theme that we ought to have that theme through the, through the IGF, then I'm sort of assuming that there's probably a main session or some at least main activity of work that's associated with it, which is the correlation I'm making. I see lots of heads in the room here. I can't see that online, obviously, but saying that that was yes. So let me go back to the queue um, that's up there. And again, I think what we're, let's see if I can find it here. Um, do you have the queue there in a minute? Uh, okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Lewis. Um, again, so if we can have specific comments to the prioritization focus discussion, which we were trying to have through some specific suggestions on um, themes or topics. And next in the queue, we have Michael. Uh, good afternoon, Chair. For the record, issue of Michael, a government stakeholder group. Uh, I'm looking at the themes based on current events. In the recent, I think in the last six months, there's been too much talk on data, and I think Europe has come up with a general data protection regulation, which is the GDPR, which is so punitive such that by the time the IGF will be taking place at the end of the year, many of the people have about the impact because it goes beyond Europe. Just yesterday I was watching BBC, Facebook was summoned because of the data that they gave to one of their analytic companies, which is like they gave their the data of their users to a third party, which is which was against the law. So basically, I was trying to look at it in such a way that we put that as one of the, either the main theme or something like the sub theme, because at the moment, data has become a very hot topic. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Michael. Uh, next in the queue, we have Omar. Thank you, Chair. Um, my comment is in response to what uh, Mario Duma said. She said that uh, businesses are looking for uh, to increase their balance sheet. Believe me, it's not a balance sheet they're looking to increase. It, it's actually the income statement. But that's a little, uh, you know, old perception of the business. Uh, if you see, uh, it's also called entrepreneurship, and entrepreneurship is about creating jobs. It's about uh, creating wealth. It's about making a difference. If you see the number of 
laptops in this room which is helping us all are all created and invented by the private sector and that's the kind of difference the uh, businesses are making so the businesses are um, uh, connecting uh, people in remote areas and uh, you know about the impact that the businesses are making and this is the reason we want to engage more businesses uh, in the uh, IG process at the IGF, you know, to do sessions, to uh, help others, to um, enhance learning and knowledge sharing and contribute to, uh, you know, the development we all are working on. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. I was, I was going to say that just because the bait is thrown doesn't mean anyone needs to bite, but your, your comment was actually very, very good and, and very helpful, so thank you. Uh, Zina, you have the floor. <coughs> thank you, Chair. In line with what I, proposed, uh, what I said earlier, I would like to see a session uh, discussing the new technologies for development. Uh, maybe the someone who can speak about the precision agriculture i don't want to repeat the same but it, it's something in in this uh, direction uh, precision agriculture digital uh, healthcare and uh, it uh, it can be a focused uh, main session you, we all know that the vips and the uh, high level uh, speakers they can speak for hours be, be, uh, without uh, getting tired so if we can just uh, uh, focus the main session on, on two or three topics and uh, it will give flexibility to all the speakers and the attendants to move around and uh, uh, change uh, the sessions and attend as much as, as they can. Thank you. Thank you, Zina. Tamea, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I don't have a particular suggestion for main teams, but I, um, I actually got in the queue before Lynn, um, before you called on Liesl, um to make her presentation about the main sessions. Um, and I wanted actually to make um, the exact point that you ended up discussing um, about the tags and how to link um, workshop tags to teams sub-teams of, um, of the IGF and if we can perhaps use those tags this year as well to see a couple of the main um, issues that are coming from the community um, that would be good to, to discuss throughout the certain teams three four five it was discussed um, and perhaps orient main sessions to reflect um, those main teams in a way they don't have to be word for word the same main sessions as the sub-themes, but try and pull out an aspect um, of that sub-theme or uh, uh, create a way to approach it. It would have um, a much better framework and a more coherence throughout the program of what we're trying to do here. Yeah, my two cents. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Tamea. I mean, I think it's important to make that linkage. Um, I think it's also important that if in the collective wisdom of the MAG, we believe we need to be more focused and we need to set some priorities and we want to see um, some things specifically um, discussed or, or specifically highlighted at the IGF, then we need to determine that now because we need to make sure that that's clear in the call for workshop proposals that eventually goes out. Um, so I think, you know, we, we still keep coming back to, um, uh, you know, maybe the best way to say is Michael Nelson's, you know, sideways as well as bottom up. You know, are there some things that the MAG feels strongly um, we should be looking for to ensure that the IGF is relevant and topical and, and um, cohesive, some of those things. If we want that, then we need to have that discussion now so that we can determine if there are some areas which we think are, are more important and we want to call and look for specific proposals so that we can actually make that determination in the call for workshop proposals, which by the way, according to our schedule, would need to go out in something like three or four weeks, right? I mean, that's, that's the time frame we're talking about. And we all know that there's, uh, it's not nearly so easy to get work done when we all go back and try and do this through virtual calls and, and email lists. So. This is why we're pushing a little bit on a couple of areas and, and 
you know, certainly apologize if the pace isn't that comfortable, but I uh, you know it's the pace we're we're on given the late announcement of mag and things. So I think we just need to buckle down and and do it. Um, the I'll come back in one second there. Um, we have McCann, who I think I haven't seen in the room, so I think must be online. McCann, you have the floor. Are we going to be able to hear Makan? If we're not. Um, there is a comment then, if maybe I can read it okay. quickly. Digital economy and emerging technology, inclusion for all, diversity and equality, security in the digital economy, access and infrastructure for digital economic growth, Internet of Things implementing the SDGs in relation to poverty reduction, digital economy, and blockchain. Thank you, Anya. Um, G, I think this is your time in the queue. It's time to, difficult to slot you in when you're coming okay, in thank a you. different mechanism. Okay. But. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, actually, I'm not eager because I would like to give the opportunity to <laughs> colleagues online. Um, just uh, briefly on um, on the themes or our future emphasis, uh, I would like to echo what has been said by uh, many of our previous uh, colleagues said previously that uh, the digital gap among different countries, regions, and, and gender should be our um, focus in the future. Uh, in this regard, access and low cost and affordable access for all uh, is very important, but uh, to enable people uh, enrich themselves by uh, uh, making good use of the access to internet, it goes much. It goes beyond uh, the, uh, the access to internet uh, only. For example, whether uh, countries or certain regions do they have uh, a logistic or delivery systems? Do they have the online payment system, uh, etc. So that uh, you know, people in the rural areas can uh, send their produce or handcrafts to to the cities or even foreign countries. Uh, this is what uh, um, most African countries need the most: uh, the Im access plus enabling environment. And uh, in addition to that, uh, you know, some countries they already have have very high la ratio of uh, internet access, but uh, their national government may not have enough capacity to make use of the new technologies. For example, the big data technology. Some countries may uh, uh, lack the, the means to make use uh, or of uh, collecting or analyzing big data for macroeconomic uh, planning, for traffic control, and uh, road building, disaster alleviation, et cetera. So we, we, we should uh, continuously working on uh, international cooperation and the techni technical and the financial assistance uh, and the sharing of best practice uh, in this regard. Thank you. Thank you, G. Liesl, you're in the queue. Uh, I think that was from before when I was coming back in on the guidelines. Sorry about that. Okay. No, that's great. Um, the richness of returning time. Yuta, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, as said before, I, I really like to put the focus on the benefits of the Internet for <coughs> society. Nonetheless, since uh, World Summit of Information Society 1 and 2, when a Charter on Human Rights and the Information Society was elaborated, it has been a challenge to balance the risks emerging from new technologies with the benefits they bring to the people. 
And as a child rights advocate, I'd like to strongly emphasize the need to have this balance taken into consideration as a main theme for the IGF 2018. I know human rights are not a new topic, but I think uh, it gets its innovative nature from the new innovative technologies that we have to take in mind, which is uh, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, and so on. And I think it, that makes it necessary to discuss human rights continuously. Thank you. Thank you, Yuta. Um, I'm actually, um, with, with Chengatai's support and agreement, sliding him into the queue <laughs> after Samuel. Okay. Uh, so just now we have Anya. So there is one comment from um, MAG member Gian Soriano to read. Three main points that were mentioned, integration in the main sessions, day zero, and how to involve young people in the IGF. I do agree that we should keep day zero. It serves as an icebreaker for new young participants. In the youth IGF Asia Pacific, day zero serves as an introductory day that have less formal structures, for example, icebreaking games, expecting settings, simulation, etc. Can serve as an orientation day, kind of like the newcomers track. Of course, sending organizations do have the responsibility to ensure that youth have had at least some capacity building sessions beforehand, but knowing the must-knows is still different from actually being there. Developing information materials is a su suggestion raised in IGF 2017. It could provide information on how to join existing activities in the IGF. Developing a resource person. It would be easier for collaborative sessions between young people to organize and also to be integrated into the main panel sessions. It would also be easier to connect session organizers and potential youth speakers and vice versa. I don't agree with having separate a youth session. I think young people would want to be part of the IGF instead of being isolated on their own. Formal structures can be intimidating and I, and I do suggest trying to have informal structures, for example, the breakout groups. Mentorship programs. Digital grassroots, ISOC youth fellows, have started this. But as newcomers, youth has expressed that it would be good to have someone explaining the ropes or someone they can directly <laughs> ask or interact with. Thank you. Thank you. If we can just make sure in uh, the transcript, shouldn't say grassroots execute fellows, but grassroots <laughs> ISOC fellows, I think, was the... <laughs> <laughs> Some of them have gone by, but that's probably one which is <laughs> worth, um, <laughs> worth correcting. Um, next in the queue uh, was Zina. Yes, it's the same remark. I, I noticed that the transcript is not uh, accurate. Uh, can, we, uh, can we at least revise what we said? I mean, if if you if there's a correction to what's in the transcript, then you yeah, can yeah, do that. I, I said think we without could just getting give it tired, it was uh, taken uh, the result getting fired. So okay. it's, it's totally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. I mean, if if it really changes the the meaning, then I think yeah. we should <laughs> should do that. I don't know if the if this is could we get is this it feasible? to Eleanor or something yes, or. Uh, if you could just um, send it to Eleonora, but then she must know where to insert it. So you have to uh, send her also the wrong text, or at least the first four or five words of the wrong text, so she can do a search and replace. And find Th it. That could have uh, happened with other speakers. Yes. Um, or when the transcript is up, you can send us both blocks. This is the wrong one. Please okay. just change it to this, and so then we'll look at it, and then we'll just change it. I yeah. think that might be the easiest. We'll just post it, and then immediately yes, thank you. give us the correction. Yeah. <laughs> and, and of course, the slower we speak, the more accurate the transcription mm -hmm. um, is as well. Um, that was your comment, Zina? Um, Samu, you'll have the floor, and then we have Chengatai. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. And uh, I, th I think uh, the IGF 2018 should be a platform where we can get governments to come uh, exercise their bragging rights. And how can we get them to do this? If we can ask governments to talk more of, uh, or, or we look at best or 
we look at government best practices and we ask these uh, government officials to come talk about issues such as uh, smart cities, uh, cyber security and uh, artificial intelligence as well as blockchain, I think. Most of them will be interested to come talk to us about these things. Uh, coming to Julio, I think he reads minds. He, he talked about leaving nobody behind. And I was also thinking about something that has to do with leaving nobody behind. And uh, I would like to say the fourth generational uh, uh, revolution or the fourth industrial revolution, leaving nobody behind. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Samuel. Um, Chengatai was in the queue just because he was um, reminding me that um, uh, a number of people have actually suggested sort of linkages to the SDG, and there was a comment, a couple of comments in the stock taking processes, um, which reminded us that in fact the high-level political forum that takes place in the UN actually does have for the next several years a high-level theme and subset of the SDGs that they're actually focusing on. So um, we're simply putting that into the discussion um, at this point. In, in 2018, it's transformation towards sustainable and resilient societies. But that's in July, so Oh, so that's, um, so Chengatai is saying that that's in July. I don't know if that actually matters, I suppose, but that's the 2018 one with, with uh, six um, SDGs associated with it, and you can um, get that on the sustainabledevelopmentun.org site. The 2019 um, one is empowering people and ensuring inclusiveness and equality, which of course ties in nicely with uh, a couple of the last comments, notably Samuel's in. And Chengatai is pointing out that for the last one, the SDGs that it's um, tying to is four, quality education, eight, decent work and economic growth, 10, reduced inequalities, number 13, climate action, number 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions, and 17, partnerships for the goals. Um, again, um, this is not advocating, that's not our role. It's simply that there have been a number of calls from people in this room into the stock taking process to sort of be aware of those as we, as we move forward. Uh, Rasha, you were next in the queue. Thank you, Lynn. And uh, speaking of uh, transcription, and, uh, and a big thank you, of course, for the effort. But uh, I think this morning while Michael was introducing himself, his name appeared as Manal Ismail, my Egyptian colleague. So uh, we now know that Manal apparently moonlights as a police officer in Zambia, so that's good to know. <laughs> I took a picture and I sent it to her on WhatsApp. She got a, she got a good laugh out of it. But <laughs> um, maybe something for the record to clear as well. Uh, I, I would also like to see uh, a main session on, um, on uh, human rights, uh, particularly as it pertains to privacy. Uh, the recent Facebook case, of course, is, uh, is a hot topic, and I think that would uh, bring a lot of interest to the table. Uh, there have also been reports about uh, some governments allegedly mining cryptocurrency using their, um, their citizens' data. Uh, so I think if we sort of uh, gather quite a, a few issues related to privacy as a human right and maybe put these in a main session, that, that might be interesting and, and uh, would be quite current. Thank you. Thank you, Rasha. And I am so pleased to welcome a new <laughs> MAG member to comment, and really would encourage any other new MAG members to, to comment as well. But Heiko, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I would like to inform uh, MAG members that uh, we will, our national IGF will be next week and one of the items is in this IGF what is the currency of the time of the information society is it fame on internet or likes in social media and why we choose these kind of items is one of research in Estonia that uh, there is a lot of information but one shocking information was that uh, 25 percent of youngsters 
upload voluntary naked picture to the internet. And even more, we have even the video stream where the youngsters are killing people and nobody don't tell anything to their friends and so on. And that's why it might be one interesting items for discuss <coughs> more broadly. Thank you. No, thank you. There certainly are a lot of societal issues um, <coughs> and, and much of what we're seeing on the internet and even in a lot of the, the topics that have come up so far as possible themes. <coughs> There's nobody else in the queue at the moment, so with some trepidation, I'll go through quickly the things, the themes that I've heard and tried to put them together if there was some sort of overlap. Um, and then I think we need to I think the question really in front of us at this point in time is, does the MAG want to identify a small number of areas that they feel are so important that they want to have um, a more active role in shaping a part of the program that's associated with some of those themes? This would be the sideways comment that we were hearing yesterday. Um, uh, you know, just. The reason why I think that's important is if the answer is no, then we just talk about what the overall theme is and we do a call for workshop proposals and we, you know, tinker with it a little bit like we did last year, but I, but I don't think that's where everybody's kind of heart is. If it's not and we want um, a program that is a little more, I'm really searching for a better words, so please, if anybody can help, but a little more um, curated or a little more a piece of a directed by the MAG, which says, I think these issues are critically important. I think they'll be important to the community, and therefore we should spend some cycles thinking about how we maximize those topics within the IGF. Then we need to come to what those topics are, the two or three, because again, that will influence the, the call we ultimately put out for the workshops. That would mean that we would take this list that I will go through in a minute and get it down to something probably less than four. And maybe there's even an opportunity to do a quick poll. Um, but again, with the timetables that I think people have seen, um, it really would need to be a, a relatively quick and, and sort of informal poll. But we do have some options to get some, you know, some more input in here. Um, G, do you have a comment before I go through the list, or go ahead? Thank you, Madam Chair. In, in, <clears throat> in addition to what I've been, uh, I've said earlier. I just want to echo what had been said that uh, protection of the young generation is really important. And as China is concerned, I don't want to be, you know, uh, uh, discriminating against our female colleagues that, uh, you know, in China, protection of, of our boys is really a big problem because now nowadays and in high schools or even uh, primary schools, uh, <coughs> the boys, are, are Achieving um, the worst than the girls, the, the top uh, top graders are all, all girls because the boys, uh, you know, it's a there's a phenomenon in China that seems like that the whole generation of boys are being destroyed by addiction to online gaming, and uh, we don't know what what sh what should we do, and I don't know if it's a global uh, phenomenon. But uh, we really in, uh, need to, to focus on such issues. Uh, maybe in, in other countries, girls are, are more tend to be you know, addicted to online gaming, but I don't know. Uh, at least we need to have one session, main, main, main session, focus on, on youth protection or advise them to make better, good use of the internet. Thank you. Thank you, G. I just sort of added that under kind of societal challenges. I don't know if that's gender specific per se, but I think, you know, um, well, let, me, let me go back to the top of the list and then come through. Um, I'm sure I, I in, in, in listening very carefully and trying to aggregate them so I wasn't picking up a whole host of individual ones, I'm, I'm sure um, some of you probably won't recognize your comments, in which case, please um, put them back forward again. And the more succinct you can be, the, the more, um, easy to be to capture those. I think one of the, the very first ones um, we had concretely put forward here when we opened this topic up 
um, was poverty and discrimination, which came uh, from the um, APC and was supported by um, Samuel as well. That was that included things such as the leave no one behind, I think, tag. Um, it was internet governance for access for inclusion, diversity, and equality. I think there were a number of similar references that would fit somewhere under um, either an inclusion title or uh, going for the poverty and discrimination. But that was a specific um, submission from, from APC in writing, in fact. Um, there was another one which is, uh, you know, I captured as sort of the governing st uh, stability given geopolitics. Um, there were a lot of other words put behind that, but um, I think that was um, um, talking about some of the cybersecurity issues, I think some of the societal um, ones as well, and I think that was more about um, uh, governance in a more traditional sense of government roles is what I took away from the from the discussion. So again, um, please um, help make that more clear. That's it was artificial intelligence, um, Internet of Things stated very clearly. There was digital 4.0. Um, those all came from Rudolph. Cybersecurity in a couple of different forms. Data um, and big data later was mentioned. Um, Zena's you know talked about kind of um, the internet, uh, the um, impact of uh, new digital technologies on other sorts of industries like um, agriculture and um, digital healthcare and those sorts of things. So to think about some of the implications of, of um, the digital development in some of these other industries was what I was taking away from that. Um, there was another one on digital gaps specifically focusing on um, economy and gender. And there were a couple of people that had something similar. There was um, uh, a couple of uh, requests for human rights. Um, one of that was you framed it in sort of a new technologies and understand the risk versus benefits, but um, one or two other folks mentioned human rights as well. Um, there was uh, another one over here which sort of focused on and I, I have to admit I was still tracking a different conversation, caught the end of it, was one that was talking about um, government smart cities, artificial intelligence, and cybersecurity. And I'm not sure if that was Samuel or, or Michael, I think, that put that forward. And um, I think that was more about how we increase government participation, but the suggestion that we might consider uh, a main session which really spoke to the concerns of governments and that those were some of the topics that might be of most um, interest to them. And then uh, laterally, um, um, from Hayek, it's sort of what is today's currency in the information society? Is it you know likes on your social media or is it certain minutes of fame or um, some of that might actually even be put under a societal challenges, which is some of what um, G was bringing up at, at the end, whether it's you know addiction or gaming or, and then um, I think youth is, um, certainly a main component of many of the um, topics that we've just hit. I don't, if there's a main session on youth, um, I think we would need to think about what that main session on youth actually covered. I mean, I could think of some things which would be kind of interesting to do um, with that topic, but I'm not sure that that's where you were, were going with that, G. So, I mean, it's, it's hard to get a sense of them, I think, when you only have two or three words for some of them, but I think at, at this point, my first question is, are there any any that I missed, any you could help clarify, or help me clarify? Yuta, you have the floor. It just occurred to me that we never mentioned education, and I think it would be necessary as well. Education is a main session. Just no, as part, as part of the other sessions. It's obviously a key piece. Is there any that you, I, I'm sure they could, well, they, they certainly all could use more um, uh, detail behind them in terms of what we would actually, you know, want to accomplish um, with them. Um, 
you know, for instance, I'm sure if we said um, cybersecurity as an example, or even artificial intelligence, there are so many different vectors you can come in and have that, that conversation. Um, you know, that in itself might be an indication that it's worthwhile um, thinking about that and thinking about what the, the IGF community could do with respect to helping to inform a broad discussion on artificial intelligence, for, for example. Let me go, at Raquel um, is looking for the floor. And then thank Suman, you. I'm sorry. You want to go to Suman first? Yes. Okay. Suman, thank you, Raquel. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Actually, initially I didn't ask for the floor, but I think what I planned to already have been told. But uh, lately, what I found out that the things are coming repeatedly. There is one is artificial intelligence. Secondly, big data. We have already many dis mentioned already that uh, big data and art artificial intelligence together what can do, even can influence election, a major election. And uh, we have noticed that the security comes along with that. And the way artificial intelligence is developing may in future de determine that uh, who should do work, even uh, how long we should leave. This kind of questions are coming up. So what I think that uh, things should come for us, that is the humanity, actually. So humanity and education. So uh, to my point of view, to add everything together, that humanity first can be a main theme, actually, for maybe for future ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Zuman. And um, just recall that the one specific request we did have yesterday was the SDG in the uh, focus for 2019. So I should add that in in a moment as well. Um, Raquel, you have the floor. Yes, uh, thank you, Lynn. I have two uh, comments. One on the uh, topic that I didn't hear yet, which is access. Uh, that can be tackled. Um, well, we need to remind that 40% of the population is still not connected. Um, it's still uh, a challenge that we have, and it's not only for developing countries. I mean, we've been working with several developed countries that has underserved and the indigenous communities and, and where you still need to bring the internet. Um, but also on the digital uh, divide and the new digital divide that we are seeing, uh, in terms of uh, it's widening the difference between those that are connected and those that are completely off um, the information society, digital economy, etc. Uh, and my second point was related to um, what you started um, proposing, that is, uh, I see a lot of aggregation on those topics when we are tackling new technologies and, and, uh, uh, and its challenges, or perhaps security and its challenges we can uh, merge and again be more focused into our discussions. We can make it uh, more merged sessions and, and, and bring those angles in instead of repeating um, the same things. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Raquel. Um, Rama, excellent. Um, good afternoon, my name is Adam, Adam Ajalo. I am a new member. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I have a suggestion, suggestion also um, regarding the teams that we can um, bring on board. Um, I just wanted to elaborate on the fact that as much as we want to um, attract the, um, the government uh, high level officials um, to speak on the panel, we should not only just attract um, them towards the positive impacts that the internet is giving, but also to elaborate and highlight on the negative um, aspect of it that is affecting so many people in our community, especially the young people. We have example, we have issues like um, cyber bully and cyber creators that have been affecting a lot of them. And really, um, this has been issues that we, especially um, in my area, my region, the Gambia, we have a lot of um, Encount we've encountered a lot of issues that young people are victims of, and then um, these are um, issues that we can bring on board and then try to tap the government um, to come up and reach a consens consensus where we can all work together to make sure that we can um, create pol policies that can um, bring in internet laws and then um, showcase the 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 policies can also I mean showcase um, the. Uh, <clears throat> the effects and the repercussions that these predators or cyber bullies um, can can have or can be affected on through um, 
the 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 acts that they are doing online. So I think um, it is um, also a good team to bring on board and talk about. Thank you. Thank you, Adana. Those are very important as well. Uh, Rudolph, you have the floor. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, two, two, two comments. One, I also do think that we have now uh, tables, uh, um, issues on the table that we can easily aggregate under four to five main themes, I would say. Uh, no matter how you want to call them, one is development inclusion, one is government security, another one I would identify as business models, industrial challenges, something like that, and, and, and one, one, one issue I would see as uh, societal or so, so shaping society or something like that. Um, and and I, I think most of, or per perhaps even all of the issues that you mentioned uh, uh, could, could, be, could be somehow uh, uh, f f be, be put under these headings, however you want to call them. Um, and then just again to make the point, um, and I understood, and thank you very much to, uh, to Liesl for explaining how, how, how the thinking about the main, the main session has developed and, and, and where we are, but still, um, and I understand that, and you said it, uh, Chair, that we, we are now looking for issues for the main, or themes for the main sessions. Still, I would like to have this um, in a sense that it is not only for the main sessions, but for a thematic cluster around the main sessions. And actually, Rudolph, that's very well said, because I was trying to back into the ladder by having a main sessions <laughs> discussion, because it, I wanted to have it around some concrete topics rather than really kind of, we were, we were sort of falling into a, how do we structure it discussion, which I thought was a little premature. Um, so I think that's exactly what we're trying to do. And I, I don't think we need to close on the main themes now. I think we could leave some room for um, the workshop selection process and still a tag process and that sort of thing. I think the question we really need to decide is are there, does the MAG want to be more proactive in helping to kind of shape or curate a piece of the program because we think there are topics that actually require, um, that, that because we think that doing so would actually help advance these topics in a significant way for the world? And if so, what are those small number of topics? Again, because we should begin some planning work for them, but we should also be right up front in the call for workshop proposals in terms of what we're doing with the program overall. So that's exactly what I was trying to do is to find a way to back into the thematic topics through, through themes. I hope that's clear. Uh, Liesl, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to, well, your description just now of sort of a hybrid process, I suppose, of trying to come up with themes <laughs> for the IGF program um, is helpful because I think it might liberate some of our thinking as to how those themes might be used, if I'm understanding you correctly, with regard to main sessions and the workshops that may somehow, um, I'm recalling that we've had a conversation and some um, comments that the main sessions and the workshops seem have in some cases at the IGF seem to be um, detached. There wasn't a lot of, in, in, um, despite years where we tried to have feeder workshops or um, that go into a main session, you know, there's been lots of sort of um, ways of trying to connect the dots between the main sessions and the, and the workshops. So I think if I'm hearing you correctly, there, this process of identifying some themes is, uh, is a little bit more liberal than saying, okay, we're going to have four main sessions on these four themes, if I'm reading you, if I'm hearing you correctly. Um, so that's helpful, I think, for our process going forward. Um, but I would, all, I would like to say, just regardless of how the themes are being used, um, we have some new topics that have been posed, or, and some that are sort of traditional and historical 
uh, for the IGF, and security is one, uh, privacy is another, um, sort of the human right, the buckets that we've had over the course of the years. And if we're going to address them, things that aren't new per se, then I think your comment earlier about drilling down on what exactly we might cover in those veins this year as opposed to what we've covered in the past or progressing from where we've, what we've covered in the past may be helpful as we, you know, whenever we're getting to a more of a um, determination that will inform the workshop proposal process and things like that. I'm not sure I can completely agree <laughs> with the way that um, the conversations captured in trying to get to four narrow, I'm sorry, four, you know, discrete themes. So I think we'd want to revisit that. Um, I'm happy to discuss further, but I, I'm just not sure we're, we're quite there. Thank you. Thank you, Liesl. Um, and for those that couldn't hear, the, the first part of your question is yes, that was what we were trying to, to do, so hopefully we're aligned. Um, I think Rudolph put out a, an aggregation of four themes, which is sort of his take at it. I'm, I'm sure he would welcome friendly amendments or other takes as well. So we should all just, I think, continue, continue going through the, the discussion here. Uh, so next in the queue is Israel. Thank you, Chair. Israel Rosas, for the record. Uh, I'd be in favor of a more uh, guided uh, definition uh, uh, by the MAG for the, for the meeting uh, and uh, build on the um, suggested uh, clusters or areas or themes. Perhaps we could uh, take a uh, space for emerging issues uh, and we could also take into account that we could integrate uh, some discussion on emerging, on emerging issues with uh, some uh, lightning talks or some innovative sessions as pushed up by, by Nacho Estrada and, um, and so on. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Israel. Um, and I think we can implement all sorts of formats in the work of the, the program broadly. Arnold, you have the floor. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Lynn. Uh, Arnold Verheyen, Netherlands Government. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, recapturing or trying to get grab together the uh, the useful uh, suggestions uh, uh, which have been uh, brought forward by uh, by several MAG members. Um, I myself, uh, looking at this list, there's still difficulty to see how we end up with uh, four or five. Uh, uh, topics which could be uh, used as a main theme. Um, and then I looked again at the, uh, the uh, program, how it was developed uh, within the European uh, Dialogue on Internet Governance, and I really liked that. I mean, they started by, uh, by, by, by capturing uh, uh, eight categories, and fr from there on they, uh, they digged into the, the details and they uh, came up with uh, some interesting uh, uh, issues uh, for uh, main sessions or workshops. Uh, I named them shortly. First category or tags is called access and literacy. Then media and content. Third one is development of internet governance ecosystem. The fourth deals with security and cybercrime. The fifth one is dealing with human rights. Uh, sixth one, technical and operational issues. The seventh one deals with uh, innovation and economic issues. And the last one, the eighth category, is cross-cutting and other issues. And I think if we look at those categories, uh, we can have a clear picture what the landscape is and where we should pick and choose uh, the four or five main themes. It, could not have been, it should not have been all the uh, eight uh, categories which I just mentioned. But uh, I think it's up to the MAC to decide uh, which one, looking at those eight categories, could, uh, could fall under the, uh, the uh, uh, heading of uh, main theme. Um, and uh, last but not least, I think uh, what Eurodic is doing, they are meeting the 4th and 5th of June in, in uh, Georgia, in uh, Eastern Europe, Tbilisi, uh, that what they are doing will feed into the global IGF. I wouldn't say that we should copy those eight categories, but at least we can uh, look at it and have a
have a clear picture of the, as I said, the, the, the total landscape, and then come up with uh, the uh, four or five main issues to tackle. Thank you. Thank you. Th those are actually very, very interesting as well, which kind of reminds me the media and content um, really didn't come up all that much here, despite fake news and disinformation and misinformation, and which is just kind of interesting. But Thomas, you had asked for the floor. If it lets me here. <laughs> um, well, I, I was just, one point that I was going to make was actually that I also have missed uh, the, the issue of, of let's say, uh, impact of media, social media, new media on public in opinion shaping, on, on democracy, uh, also use and abuse of social media and data used. I mean, you just have to read the news in the last few days and probably more of this is going to come until uh, the, the, the second half of, of the year. So I'm, I'm sure that the, the discussion that we had uh, for the first time in, 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 this, in this direction uh, in Geneva will not stop on the contrary, we will have more, uh, more information and more events and more occurrences to, to, to discuss and, and, and the political pressure also of these issues, about these issues will continue to rise. So I also think that that should somehow be visible in, in the program if you have the claim to be relevant on all key, key issues. With regard to, to baskets and, and clustering, um, I happen to also have been involved in, in, in Euro, they get in the core team since, since the beginning. Um, it is actually, in, basically Euro started from, the IG, from where the IGF was after two, three years. The, the main sessions also used to have and still have the clusters and we were discussing in the early years like should we discuss security for a main session then have another main session about human rights that was the very early discussion, then people felt that it actually makes more sense to combine these two things so that people realize that it doesn't make sense to discuss security without thinking about human rights or, or discussing security without openness and the other way around. So these clusters have already more or less formally or informally existed at the global IGF as well as also in Euridic. What in Euridic we realized over the years is in the beginning, as I said, when we switched from asking for workshop proposals to issues that in order to get the issues to group them, you somehow need to have a concept. And we basically were taking, building on the concept of the IGF with these clusters. We expanded it, adapted it a little bit to the European, uh, uh, let's say, priorities. And then first, we, we asked the people where they would, um, no, we, we, we put the, the baskets, and then we asked the people, do you see your theme issue as part of the rather of the openness basket or security basket because sometimes that is also a challenge for the mag or the juridic for those who then develop the program what do they actually mean so you 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 give a chance to those that they come up with an issue uh, or with an idea what they want to discuss to also frame it in a way that you that you better understand what is it actually that they that they want to discuss and so we ended up with these six, six seven categories and we always left the space open for things that the people consider that, well, I don't, my theme doesn't really fit into one of these baskets, it's something new. And this is, so this is why it's important if you define, predefined baskets, that you always leave room for, call it emerging issues or, or whatever, for something that doesn't really fit into these things or something that hasn't even been there when you discussed it. So, uh, but I think to, to somehow use these clusters in a general way that, but trying to avoid that they are restricting people, but just to helping people to place things on, on, on a matrix is something that has proven very useful. Thank you. No, thank, you. Well, that, thank you, that's very useful. And I mean, if there are any other kind of guidance points in terms of how, how one might evolve pulling together these programs, I'm sure we're all very happy to hear them. Uh, Mary, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Mary Uduma is my name for the record. I'm from Nigeria Technical Community. First, I want to read McKen's submission that Anya had read, but I, I want to highlight some of the things he, he said about digital economy and emerging technology, inclusion of all, diversity and equality, security in the digital economy, 
access and infrastructure for digital economic growth, Internet of Things, implementing the S SDGs in relation to poverty reduction, digital economy, and blockchain. So those are now, I, I also want to um, um, read out some of the things we, are, we do in our own, um, in our own uh, national program we have looked at. We looked at data access, what, what, some of the things we're looking at. Data access, technology, and regulation. Developing, you know, we are looking at developing a national strategy, but we could go, it could be a global strategy. Achieving sustainable development go through fourth industrial revolution. The internet knowledge beyond human imagination for sustainable development. The internet navigating from a world of whom you know and what you know. Then application of internet of everything in solving day-to-day -day challenges. So, so th those are some ide ideas that are throwing up at the national level. So probably we could also consider those ones. Thank you. Yeah, interesting, interesting thoughts there as well. Thank you, Mary. Zina, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I would like to propose uh, highlighting the uh, partnership between uh, private and the uh, public. Uh, I think um, this kind of uh, partnership can uh, can uh, advance uh, the use of ICT, uh, can advance uh, development, and also uh, it can uh, it shouldn't be a, uh, like a, a specific session on uh, partnership between private public partnership. It can be included in the ac in the access, let's say, but we have to highlight this issue in order to encourage private sector and engage them and bring them to the I IGF. If you give them the, the uh, uh, facility to, to describe what they are doing, uh, how they are helping the, the public in advancing the development, it would be good and they will be uh, happy to, to participate. Thank you, Zina. Omar, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, in IGF Afghanistan, we're uh, working for this year uh, on certain issues which are of interest to the Afghan population and the people uh, who are uh, living in the Central Asia, South Asia. Uh, these include access in uh, secure uh, diversity, uh, which uh, has already been discussed. But on education, uh, what we think is, I mean, one is education on broader level and then uh, when it comes to the industry the skills are uh, um, kind of more important because a lot of people um, or some people uh, who have um, education but they don't uh, this uh, they don't have the skills that are needed by the industry so that gap needs to be bridged uh, and uh, our proposal would be to uh, highlight skills when uh, we talk about uh, education. Uh, local internet economy, uh, that's another issue. Online safety, uh, that has become you know, a major issue, uh, um, especially in um, our part of the world. Uh, people are cyber victimized, uh, especially uh, women and children. Uh, so uh, mm, that kind of a discussion would, uh, would really help raise awareness uh, as well as uh, share uh, experiences and knowledge. Uh, Cybersecurity and data protection, youth and gender, these have been always uh, on our uh, list on the top. Uh, but one of the issues is uh, trusted IDs. You know, in some of uh, some countries, uh, technologies uh, do not grow because uh, they don't have the um, uh, electronic IDs. Uh, and that includes Afghanistan. We're working on uh, the e taskira which is uh, the e national uh, electronic national ID card, and that will uh, help reduce, uh, address so many of our social problems, including corruption and um, insecurity. Um, and uh, yeah, other topic, which is 
very important for countries like, like Afghanistan uh, and other uh, countries in the region uh, is the introduction to the Internet governance. So we need more, uh, you know, uh, knowledge sharing, uh, awareness so that people really understand what Internet governance is and how they can uh, participate in the uh, internet um, uh, governance, um, you know, platforms that are um, on national level, regional, and global level. Um, so these are some of uh, m uh, my suggestions. Thank you, Omar. We have two more people in the queue, and I'd like to close the queue and then see if we can determine a way forward so we all have things to think about tonight and come back tomorrow. Um, we have Raquel in the queue and Jennifer. Raquel, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, I, I again have two, topic, two points to make. Uh, the first one is regarding the experience we have with the regional Latin American Caribbean uh, IGF, the LAC IGF, in which we are um, also, uh, having a new approach this year, uh, we used to have uh, open consultations with the community for the topics and then uh, the, the program committee did the, the clustering and then uh, organized the sessions. Uh, this year, we've made this mixed approach in which uh, we're still going to consult the community, but we are going to have at least four sessions that are curated by the program committee, ensuring we have this focused uh, approach, but leaving some room for the community and, and for those that are not in the, the, the program committee or, uh, or elsewhere could also send the inputs and then and, and we can work the program in a more um, agile way. Uh, that's one. And the, uh, the second one is regarding, I mean, I don't want to be struggling with this, <laughs> but um, when we talked about uh, having those topics and it was kind of connected with the main sessions, but a lot of what has been said is also in the intersessional work. So again, not only clustering uh, main sessions workshops, oh, sorry, uh, my Italian Latin way <laughs> of talking, uh, but uh, also uh, clustering and thinking about the intersessional work, in particular uh, on the SDGs and what has been said on the importance for the SDG 17 on partnerships or uh, even continuing the work with SDG 9 um, and then uh, the eight with uh, the, the future of jobs and skills, which is also in the importance of streamlining, streamlining the discussions that are in other places um, in, uh, regarding digital economy. For example, G7, G20 are tackling those. Uh, so just to point out uh, the importance of having this, keeping that in mind that we might be clustering also other um, components of the IGF. Yeah, that's a, a good reminder. Thank you, Raquel. Jennifer, you have the floor. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me the floor. I'll be very brief here. Um, I just wanted to echo some points that my colleagues have raised um, earlier. I think we did mention the access and digital divide. Um, coming from the Asia Pacific region, this is a really still a very big issue that we talk about every year at the Asia Pacific Regional IGF, as well as the NRIs in, in the region. So I do want to um, echo that. I do see some points that were made also uh, previously. I think Liesl did point out this point, and also Zena. If we use these traditional buckets that you know traditionally have appeared in, in past IGFs, we need to make sure the conversation is moved forward in a way that it's still interesting and fruitful for people participating. So not just a stale conversation about the same topics, but how it moves forward. And lastly, um, regarding emerging technologies, um, thank you, Israel, for, for bringing forward that point as well as other colleagues. Um, the speed of the innovation that um, the internet enables is very, very quick. And I just wanted to um, highlight the fact that our MAG members should also have the flexibility to not just have, you know, cluster these uh, main topics, but also when we receive workshop proposals to also use the information that we can gain from there to, to use that and, and be flexible with the clustering as well. So the emerging technologies could not only be a, a main s a session um, subject, for example, it could be cross-cutting um, across the entire program. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Jennifer. And I'm giving Thomas just a little bit of a heads up because I want to ask him uh, a couple of questions specifically. I mean, what we're 
what were, because this is a very useful exercise, ultimately we get to what should be in the main themes. Um, I think the big question in front of us again is, are there pieces of the program that the MAG feels strongly ought to be a little more um, directed or curated or nurtured or managed or, you know, a word of your choice since they're all so sensitive words. Um, and if so, then I think we need to identify those now so we can figure out how we want to, to, to structure those and manage those in the program. We, we clearly have room to, to fine tune that over the next few months. The point of pressure right now is so that we are as clear as we can possibly be on the program aspects when we go out for a call for workshop proposals and we engage the community. The worst thing in the world would be to set the community on one path and the MAG two months from now decides something different and, and you know we haven't provided them the right direction and they've gone off and invested time and work in, in something that now is morphing differently. So that's what I'm trying to avoid and why I'm pushing a little bit for. What makes it a little bit hard to, to come to what are the small number of topics or themes that the MAG might want to, because I, I, I hear and I sense that the MAG does want to do that for some themes, what they are, when everything we have is so high level, you know, it's, it's AI or it's media and content, but it could be any number of topics behind that. So my, my question to Thomas was, is there some magic in the process somewhere that, that takes these really, there are 55 people in this process with a vote and and 28 of them are brand new to the process and another 15 or so are. So when we say a word or a title, we all have different perspectives of what that particular topic or theme would, would mean. But how, how can we, again, kind of quickly come to a small number of themes that we might want the, the MAG to be a little more engaged in and, and curate differently? What's the process in Eurodig or any other thoughts you have? Thank you. Well, the thing is, are we now talking only about the main sessions or are, are we talking about the IGF in general or is, so just to be clear, is it, is, the, I, is the workshop discussion completely separated from the main session discussion on, on the curation at, at this element? point, yes and no. <laughs> I mean, if, if we say we want to <coughs> have a curated track on topic A mm -hmm. or a curated um, focus, um, then I think we need to determine if it's a track, is it a main session, do we want to try and pull in um, some of the NRI work that we know might be. I mean, we don't know what that structure looks like around it, but what are the, what are the few areas that we'd like to say, you know, clearly, again, to our communities, the MAG is actually going to be a little more hands-on in these particular topics, and we're going to be looking for, ultimately, I think, we're going to be looking for um, topics or projects or programs or workshops or something that feed into this small theme. So we're actually looking for a small number of high-level yeah. themes, and then we'll figure out how we structure that. Because I think we need to figure out which pieces of intercessional work we can tie and pull in, which is also, and work with other organizations. Okay. Um, well, I haven't been that involved in the in the program discussion in, in at the IGF last year because we've been more busy with, with organizing it. But from what I remember also from the past years is that basically <coughs> you already have on the main sessions. You have a curated discussion. The MAG is defining the number of main sessions and then somehow distributing the big lines of the themes and then organizing the teams. So that has already happened. Um, and I mean, there's no, there's no reinventing the wheel magic thing behind what, what Eurodic does. The only thing is that we do it the other way around. It's not that the clusters are there in the beginning, predefined. <coughs> It's, it's really the call for issues that is the start. So be, uh, at the IGF and then until the end of the year, normally like two months, there's, there's, uh, people can give their, their uh, present or, or, or announce the topics that they want to discuss. And they are more concrete than just access and literacy. They are maybe geo-blocking uh, uh, on content services, uh, I don't know, in a region or something. And then they indicate to which of the bigger blocks they would like to see this attached to, and then you get a cloud of maybe 20 or 50 or only five specialized issues that you then somehow need to combine to the extent possible into a main session on an issue. But you have first have, the, you, you have the, the issues, the more concrete issues that people want to discuss first, and then you group them into the baskets and whatever doesn't fit into the basket. And you also, depending on the number of 
of, of, of uh, inputs that you get for a particular topic, you then decide between this is going to be a main session or this is going to be a workshop with other things in parallel, which is the... So it's, it's done from the other way around. But, I mean, what the Mac, what the Mac could, can do now is if that the Mac thinks it w would like to identify now some key priority themes, you can define it as a draft and maybe send it out for consultation. But if the themes are too broad, what feedback will you get? Yes, security is important or uh, access is more important than security. So th this doesn't really make sense. So either you, you go with what you had, you have the basket and you just distribute them on the number of, of main sessions. Maybe you create more main sessions with dividing 180 minutes into two times 90 or you wait with this and, and somehow make a consultations like Eurodic does on asking for themes and you see what you get from themes and you then define how do you cluster this into main sessions once you got the feedback. So it's to some extent an, an either or. Thank you. Uh, thank you, that was helpful Thomas and, and of course the, the each year we've sought community engagement that is the call for workshop proposals and then they're selected and, and aggregated. Um, you know, we, we are yet again up against a tight timetable because um, theoretically the, the, we need to have the, a, a significant portion, maybe still all, of the MAG program is going to be workshop selected through a workshop selection process, having um, asked the community for proposals. Um, the MAG needs to evaluate those. Um, typically, we've always said that work has to be done by mid-July because the end of July and August is such a huge holiday period in North America. Um, if we wait until after that period, it's too late in terms of um, getting the work done and the people notified and that sort of thing for the MAG later in the year. If you want to allow a period of time for the workshop, for the, for the community to be able to submit workshop proposals, you basically back into the fact that the call needs to go out in the next three to four weeks. We could do you know, we could still default to some, you know, generic guidance to the, the community, ask for workshop proposals, choose them, aggregate them, and then try and still do a lot of work to, to stream them differently, to nurture them, to ensure the panels are, or the, the sessions are um, different formats, and, you know, we could, do, we could do some things, and I think that's going to be, you know, what I would say, kind of tinker around the edges a little bit. Um, if we, if we believe that we want to give, um, to move more towards focus on a couple of themes and something which is streamed, I mean, there's a few people here that continue coming to that. Rudolf, well, with a lot of his work with um, some of the Dutch organizations and, and various organizations, and said it would really help if we could find a way to make sure that the sessions kind of built on each other and actually advanced a topic significantly over the course of the IGF. And I see lots of heads nodding yes now. If that's what we want to do, I guess my assumption was we had to identify what a couple of those themes were now so that we can begin our own work progressing them and make that clear to the community so that when the workshop proposals come in as well, we can make sure we're getting the maximum integration there. Please. <laughs> if I can maybe come back. That there's also something that um, the IGF used to have that hasn't been discussed very, very uh, uh, today at least not not when i was here is the notion of or the relationship between the main sessions and the workshop you had this notion of feeder workshops um so that if you identify clusters you may say okay this is the big main session about a, a bigger area of an issue and you have more special specially focused workshops then you have the problem that if they're supposed to be feeding into the main session they have to take place before the main session which is not always possible. You could also say we have follow-up workshops on a more specialized theme, but the connections between the workshops and the main sessions is something that we need to think about. And that the other thing is, um, you're now talking again about asking for proposals for workshop. Maybe, maybe there's no time to, to do a switch from going from workshop proposals to issue proposals this year, but maybe you can do like a hybrid approach that you you split the proposals in two and you basically ask for an issue, what do you want to discuss, and then 
link to this, how could a workshop about this issue look like? But you try to start separating or try to get people used to the fact that it's, it's not necessarily only about their workshop, their people they're proposing. It's also about the issue that gives you already for this year maybe a little bit more freedom to move things around, to cluster things, and to so that you fully abolish the uh, call for workshop proposals, but you do it like twofold, say what is the issue that you'd like to discuss, and if this gets turned into a workshop, how would you do it? So that you start tearing this a little bit apart for this year, and of course this needs to be communicated and explained, um, so to, to give some room and maybe also gain some experience with if you put more focus on the issues. And then, well, we would need to see when the IGF take place, they will take place, and then we can calculate the timeline back to when, what needs to be done. In the early years, we used to have three MAG meetings, one normally around March, then somewhere between May and July, and then one in September. But that, of course, depends on when the IGF will take place. Um, because if you, if you have the list of issues and or workshops, again, that may help you with actually shaping the bigger clusters and the main sessions. If you start to do this now, I would think it's probably more difficult or it would definitely be more top down. You may also miss some developments that come up late. But it all depends also a little bit on the timeline. So maybe by m tomorrow we already know a little bit more about the timelines. <laughs> you never know, time is progress. That's true. <laughs> I don't think we're looking for more difficulty because I feel like we have a fair amount of it <laughs> in front of us at the moment. Um, Israel, you have the floor and then we'll try and kind of wrap this up because we're a little bit over time and figure out how we go forward. Oh, and Miguel as well because he's been Israel. Thank you, Chair. Israel Rosas, for the record. Just uh, for, for that, perhaps we could also uh, uh, define the, some baskets, clusters or, or whatever. Uh, around the, uh, following the, 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 the idea suggested by Thomas. And as, uh, I, I don't know, um, making a, a call to the people to, to suggest specific topics inside uh, those baskets in order to also know, the, for the MAG to know, uh, which basket or which cluster has uh, the more attention or the most issues. And in that sense, we, can, we could also know uh, which basket will have uh, more time or more sessions or more, I don't know, even we could also take that into account in order to publicize the intersessional work in order to say, okay, are you interested in emerging technologies? Well, there are a dynamic collision on blockchain. You are interested in, I don't know, cybersecurity. We have a, a BPF on cybersecurity, a, a, a dynamic collision on child online protection. Uh, and so on, in order to make a mix uh, among the, um, the work that is uh, carried out by the MAG, but also taking into account th th this, this hybrid approach. Thank you. Thank you, Israel. Um, G's put his flag up, Miguel is in, I have a few comments. We're over time, so we need to be really quite um, brief, because otherwise we're keeping um, some staff here, not secretariat staff, but <laughs> other support staff. Um, Miguel, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, I would like to fully support Thomas' proposal. Uh, I think, I believe, we are, uh, the IGF is about issues, it's not about uh, people's work. So uh, I, I think uh, this basketing of, the, of topics uh, would help the IGF to reduce uh, the proposal's numbers and reduce the session. Uh, and I think it's really useful in order to bring back uh, um, uh, relevant to the idea. Uh, and I also believe that we could use intersessional work for that topic. Maybe creating BPFs or BPs on those topics right now, or maybe <coughs> in the next meeting, but as soon as we can, would help, help us to uh, gather all those people, all those interested people in those topics, and have results over the, uh, in the event, have, have the results of the work through, through the year in the idea, and not just presenting uh, like some single piece of work there. So maybe we could define those topics, create new BPFs or BCs, and announce that those topics will not be able to be addressed or uh, at workshops in, in the, at the idea. Thank you. 
Thank you, Miguel. Those are very helpful comments, as was Israel's as, as well. Um, G, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Chair. I will be brief. It is always difficult to agree on the, the, the main themes or the name of the main themes. So uh, my, my uh, preference is that we just give uh, a generic name to each basket or category and we, uh, uh, you know, give us, you know, under the theme you can have an annotation. You have been disconnected by the host. You, you can have some, uh, you know, certain kind of annotation listing all the focus or priorities, preference mentioned by the MAG member and, uh, and uh, the, the outsiders so that it, it could be, you can uh, update the annotation starting now until we, we have the meeting. So all the, all, the, uh, all, all the concerns can be reflected and we don't need to fight over the three or five words of each theme. Thank you. No, I, I think that's um, some good, good advice as well. And actually, I mean, I think there's maybe crystallizing in my mind a way, um, a way forward, largely based on the comments here of, of uh, the last three or four speakers. Um, maybe what we could do is if we decided that there were, um, you know, a, a s small number of themes or thematic baskets or something that we wanted to pursue, maybe in line or uh, in parallel with the more traditional call for workshop proposals, we outline the fact that we're going to, you know, possibly experiment with um, a portion of the MAG program. We're looking at some of these themes. We want, here's what we're thinking about. We ask people to submit because in, in that case, if the MAG is going to be um, a little more active in terms of um, constructing the supporting, whether it's a workshop or a panel or a new session format or a piece of intercessional work, if, if, if the MAG is going to have a, a bigger role in, in participating in that over the course of this period, we could just call for issues along the lines of what Thomas was outlining and then continue to develop those going forward and in parallel have our more traditional um, workshop and then figure out how we manage that across the two. So maybe that's a way to begin developing a thematic kind of focus and notion, get community engagement in that, um, have um, more mag um, interaction or ownership or nurturing for a few of those tracks and at the same time support the traditional. We've all said we don't, you know, there's some very key things we don't want to lose around the, the program and its openness and its breadth and that sort of thing as well. So I think it's a matter of trying to merge those things. I don't know how clear that was. I'll see if I can write that up and get something out that we can start with um, tomorrow. But I think at this point I'm feeling more comfortable. I don't feel even like we need to choose the two or three now, even if we had a few more buckets um, to go out with. We let the community help us figure out what the issues are within those buckets, and we simply say this part of the program is going to be developed um, in, a, in a manner that's actually going to engage the MAG and the community more directly over the next four or five months, um, just to ensure that we have you know, a, a more cohesive theme or, or set of presentations in this particular theme. And of course, we'd still have the open call, which would help with the tags and some of the other um, activities as well. So if, if people can hopefully understand that a little bit, think about it a little bit, sleep, sleep on it overnight, and we'll come back tomorrow. And then tomorrow we should, you know, to Miguel's last point, we really should um, think about particularly the BPFs, which are charted by the MAG. Um, if we think we want a couple of best practice forums, and I think we have some thoughts from some MAG members and some of the past people on them, we need to decide what those are so we can get them chartered the same thing with uh, MAG working groups um, and probably some view of the timetable are sort of at least three of the most critical things I think we need to to get through tomorrow along along with this one. Thank you all very much. Thank you for putting up with this. I mean it's always such a mad crush when you're trying to build relationships, get some common viewpoint, change literally you know build or change the plane here in mid-flight but I really appreciate everybody hanging with it and all of the, you know, contributions and thoughts. So thank you. Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, but not in this room. We're actually in room A, I think. Yes. Room A, which is literally just across the hall there. Oh, were there any other comments? And if I could thank the ITU staff for staying late and the transcribers as well. And thank you for all your support today. Thank you.